I think that we can start. So, um, good morning, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ex friends, uh, today's uh, Aqua 3S project final webinar. <clears throat> um, I am Andrea Rubini. I represent World Europe, which is one of the partners of, uh, of the Aqua 3S project. I'm the director of operations of World Europe and, uh, well, following up uh, this project across is uh, is life. And uh, while well, I'm uh, the part of the, uh, the Aqua 3 has its project, as I mean, uh, uh, unbelievable characteristic, amazing uh, results I mean, to show. And uh, the reason for which we are here today is to <clears throat> to listen from <clears throat> the actors, from the protagonists of, uh, of the project, the experience, which compares also a number of pilots which uh, have been working in, across the past years. The project uh, it, it has been supported by uh, the Reset Innovation Program Horizon 2020 from the European Union. And um, well, it's really amazing. I mean, I, I don't have any other words I mean to describe it. And um, uh, we welcome uh, the speakers, we welcome the, the audience. Uh, this webinar is also um, web stream it through the social media. So we're going to have I mean, a number of uh, of, uh, of uh, audience of people uh, following it also through to the social. And um, just I mean, for recommendation, just ask I mean, the speakers to keep I mean, uh, their time, I mean, to control the time, even though we are going to remember that the time is to, to, to end when you close I mean, to, the, to the end of your presentation. And um, what else? I mean, uh, it's a great opportunity, really, uh, for showing the results and discussing about the results and discussing about the next steps. So the, the challenges, the pressures, the achievements, and what we in the future. And uh, well, I mean, uh, that's all from my side. I would like I mean, to uh, to to ask Natasha to to take the floor and uh, introduce the project and uh, introduce I mean what we are going to have as an agenda today. So hello everybody, uh, I'm Natasha Mumjidu and I'm Research Associate in CERT. Um, I'm the Technical Manager in Aqua 3S and today we're going to present, as uh, Andrea said, uh, Aqua 3S and the work that has been done the past 14 months. So in the beginning we're going to have a short movie on Aqua 3S and an introductory online poll for the audience. We're, we are moving then with a keynote speak from the project coordinator Spiros Kinsos. And then the presentation of Aqua 3 structure and results, a um, uh, presentation made uh, by me. Then we move to the main part of um, uh, the uh, info webinar, which is the presentation of the Aqua 3 pilots and how the solutions that were developed were actually fit and how they were into the uh, seven pilots of uh, Aqua 3S uh, realized in six uh, countries, European countries. Then we have an invited speaker, Peter DeHanst from the, the Water Group, uh, from the Callisto project, another water-related um, project. Um, and uh, then we close with a discussion moderated by Lidema Vakeridou, which is the scientific uh, uh, manager of Aqua 3S and uh, uh, key um, personnel, I mean, key people in Aqua 3S, uh, technical partners um, like uh, Yorgos Osinakis or Alexander Sopko, and all the all the pilot um, uh, representatives on the on some challenges and opportunities uh, from Aqua 3S and the technical achievements. We move then to uh, Aqua 3S and the standardization and the um, uh, note and, and um, presentation by Philippe Cousin, and then the technical solutions and market perspectives by Jan Konhailidis from Praxis. We close with the final poll questions and some final remarks and short presentation along with a presentation from Waterverse, which is a, a, a next project that is also, let's say, start to, uh, has just started, and it's also related to water uh, quality 
so it's very interesting to see uh, another uh, related project after Aqua 3S. Um, that's all from my side. Um, so I, I would suggest that we move on to the movie, Andrea. Yes, please. Thank you. Then after the movie, we have a very short poll uh, to ask some information to the attendees. Thank you. Great. So uh, if we could st stop sharing, I will move. Um, I will need to share my screen, please. Yes, you should be able to do that. You are sharing your screen now. Uh, somebody else is sharing, so I will need you to stop sharing, please. Thank you. Have you ever thought what makes our societies vulnerable? Every day, citizens are exposed to potential disasters and water-related issues can turn out to be a critical source of risk. Technologies focused on detecting dangerous events in water do exist, but there is a real gap on how we can integrate them in the existing water networks and in crisis management procedures. To fill this gap, the Aqua 3S Horizon 2020 funded project, composed by a consortium of 23 partners of different expertise, led by CERTH, Greece, steps in to combine novel technologies in water security with the aim to standardize existing sensor technologies and propose strategies, methods and procedures that will help water facilities to easily integrate solutions regarding water safety and security. How will they achieve this? Through sensor networks that are deployed in water supply networks and sources supported by complex sensors for enhanced detection. Sensor measurements supported by videos from unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, satellite images and social media observations from citizens that report water-related events in their area. End users testing each prototype of the system with live demonstrations in order to propose enhancements for the final Aqua 3S platform. In fact, Aqua 3S aims at creating standardized methods and strategies for all relevant stakeholders by foreseeing the improvement of innovation capacity and integration of new knowledge in five main areas of innovation. Innovation in substance detection in water, Innovation in data acquisition from UAVs and Earth observation. Innovation in social media monitoring. Innovation in algorithms for threat detection and localization in the existing water distribution networks. Innovation in crisis management modeling for enhanced preparedness. Overall, the project will actively promote standardization in the water sector and Aqua 3S Innovative Solutions will provide water facilities and responsible authorities with strategies and methods whose adoption will lead to easily integrated water solutions that would allow them to be more efficient in crisis management. This, in combination with a highly effective detection system that can detect and tackle water-related crises on time, could pave the way for a comprehensive, secure and safe water management across Europe. Where will this take place? Aqua 3S technologies will be validated, tested and demonstrated in Belgium, Brussels, Greece, Thessalonica, France, Paris, Italy, Trieste, Cyprus, Limassol, Bulgaria, Sofia, Botivgrad through multiple crisis scenarios in order to see how certain methods and strategies work in real-life situations and how the Aqua 3S systems respond to the various end-user needs.
Okay. Well, congratulations. To all. Um, I think that it was satisfactory and uh, a good basis for the next um, um, speech and, and, and discussion and presentations. We just I mean, want I mean, to have some information from the audience. So, so uh, can we start the poll? So if you can point them in your mobile uh, to the QR code, or uh, you, you can, <clears throat> otherwise you can just go to www.mentors.com and enter the code. And uh, just a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Can we share for the slide um, with the code? Thank you. See that we can show the results. The first question. Well, I mean, it's an average, as I say, that's uh, okay, it's still coming. So it means that I mean, somebody needs a coffee. But we see that also, I mean, uh, a number of superhero or superheroes. Okay, so at least I mean nobody is uh, is really flat today. So <laughs> let's go ahead with the second question. Good spot. I mean, say that we have a majority of research centers, followed by the utilities, then academia, others, and maybe like I mean, what the Europe's organizations representing the what the stakeholders or other stakeholders, and the authorities, and uh, so it seems that all the all the scenarios is represented. Very good. Thank you so much. I think that the poll, I mean, identifies well, I mean, the kind of audience that we is attending today, uh, this info webinar or 3S. Great. I think that we can stop the poll. And I leave the room to Natasha once again for introducing the next speaker. Okay, so I would like uh, to introduce Spiro Skinsos uh, as the project coordinator of Aqua 3S, who is going to do a presentation on security, safety, and standardization in crisis management and preparedness. So, Spiros, uh, hi. Hi, good morning. Uh, uh, can I share my screen? Yes. Okay. I think that right now it's visible okay. for everyone. Yes. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being uh, here for uh, this webinar. I know it's hard. I saw the energy, it's about uh, at the medium standard. Okay. <laughs> we will try to keep you awake. So, Aqua 3S, it's a project that uh, it comes to an end uh, this year, uh, actually, this month. 
and uh, I'm going to present you in a few slides uh, what uh, how it started and uh, what we actually did. Um, so the project will be uh, what was the project? Uh, actually, the project has to do with uh, the enhancing uh, standardization strategies. Uh, so we try to integrate innovative technologies for safety and security uh, in the water networks, uh, especially for between or among uh, the partners that uh, are actually the um, the managers of the water networks at their countries at their uh, local societies. Uh, we we started with the challenges that we faced. I mean, uh, how how did the project started? How it was written? It had to do with the disasters that uh, actually uh, vulnerabilize uh, the societies, uh, and uh, we must uh, we we must make a, um, a risk reduction uh, management. So. Uh, drinking water uh, among these uh, disasters, drinking water is, let's say, one of the main uh, risk uh, sources. Uh, so for the safety and the security of the societies, uh, we have to ensure that they will be able, uh, people will be able to have access to drinkable water. Uh, so although uh, we have been um, uh, pro many pro many technologies have been proposed uh, all these years. Uh, we saw a gap that uh, we could integrate all these existing technologies in one uh, in one project, in one uh, UI, in one let's say application. So Aqua 3S, as you already saw in the video, combines novel technologies in water safety and security and tries to standardize, uh, tried at least, to standardize the existing sensor technologies, but also uh, to complement uh, the state-of-the-art detection mechanisms. Uh, what was the concept? What is the concept of Aqua 3S? Uh, we integrate in Aqua 3S, we integrate uh, uh, state-of-the-art technology achievements from uh, different fields, from different areas. Uh, Aqua 3S system will consist of a combination uh, of a high precision uh, key point streptoscopic sensor and widely spread uh, reflective index sensor deployed at uh, specific points of the existing water distribution network. This actually was tested uh, with uh, great success in uh, all these locations that have been uh, referred in the video. And at the same time, we tried to, to put the novel technologies that widely used, especially nowadays, like uh, unmanned uh, airborne system, UAVs, uh, Internet of the Things, and of course, the satellite images that actually are very helpful to detect, assess, and evaluate uh, any harmful, any uh, possible risk uh, in in the distribution networks, in water distribution networks. All these data that it was obtained from Aqua 3S sensor networks um, and from the existing infrastructure of the utility had to be processed, had to be managed, had to be uh, fused. And uh, this is exactly what Aqua 3S make. Uh, made uh, feasible. Um, so we tried with all this data to uh, to create uh, threat detection algorithms. And uh, of course, all this data was fused with different techniques. Uh, the practitioners uh, from uh, the, the stakeholders, actually the practitioners uh, for, uh, for this, um, for, for Aqua 3S platform, and uh, from water medical sector actually supported uh, with their experience and uh, their feedback, these early warning and decision uh, support systems. Um, what was the need to start such a big project? Uh, actually, the importance of um, 
of managing the natural and the man-made disasters uh, has has shown that uh, it is crucial to 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 bring in light very early all these risks so uh, we could reduce harm and damage and ensure the appropriate level of continuity uh, for the essential societal functions like water distribution uh, like having providing access uh, for all the people to the water facilities um, in the past uh, the focus of incident management has been uh, local or regional or national uh, and single organization usually uh, the, the water distribution network uh, was uh, allocated to to local uh, organization and uh, we, we try to to make it a, a wider for the stakeholders aqua 3s addresses the the issue for a wider uh, wider uh, group of uh, stakeholders we we try to expand to beside national to also to international that's why we have different uh, partners uh, from different countries and the critical factors uh, for this need to to address such an issue for um, for the water network was uh, the increased urbanization which actually uh, raised a bigger need for the people was also the critical infrastructure dependencies and interdependencies uh, the socio economical dynamics that uh, raising and of course the environmental change and the diseases, especially the COVID era that provided us this kind of feedback. Um, and lastly, and the movement of the people and goods uh, around the world that actually increased the potential for uh, any disruption uh, and disasters that uh, um, expand to different geographic and uh, other boundaries. Um, so uh, to who to whom it could be addressed such a software such a, a platform so this platform is applicable to any organization that is responsible for preparing uh, or actually manages the the incidents at local regional and the national or international level uh, including those who are responsible uh, for and participating in incident preparation. Uh, actually, many deliverables, many outcomes of this project uh, provide guidance and direction in incident management. And uh, uh, it also addresses to people that they are responsible for the communication and the interaction with the public. Uh, but also to, to the people that they do research in the field of incident uh, management. Uh, who will, who could benefit from uh, and how could be benefit the stakeholders from this project? Actually, the organization could benefit uh, from using uh, such a common approach for incident management. So the common approach, it's a good start to start using Aqua 3S, it uh, creates it creates uh, a collaborative uh, working environment and ensures uh, more coherent and uh, complementary complementary actions uh, among uh, the organization. So most incidents, although they are local in nature and uh, are managed at local uh, level could also provide an example to expand to regional, state, or provincial level. And at this point, I think that uh, Natasha could take the floor and start explaining uh, the project as a whole. Thank you, Spiros. Thank you, Spiros, very much. Uh, I will, uh, let's say, uh, now uh, make my presentation. So uh, if you could stop sharing. Yep. Thank you very much. I've just did. Thank you.
So uh, hello everybody. So I'm going to present the some uh, the solutions that were created within Aqua 3S, and which is of course a collaborative work from all the of the partners of the consortium. Uh, I'm going to skip this because this was already mentioned. So, but just and move to the aspects that were developed within Aqua 3S. So we have several data products, as mentioned uh, before, UAV, satellite sensor, social media phone complaints. As integration, we have fireware, which let's say a main, um, uh, we should um, mention it very, uh, uh, because it's uh, the main uh, platform that was used. Uh, the audio servers, web dev, knowledge base, and uh, several technologies, in, uh, including crisis classification, crisis management scenarios, social media, satellite image analysis, anomaly detection, intervention management, social media awareness, and report generation. And all this will say used by the stakeholders, which were citizens or water utility operators, or even emergency responders and water authorities. So um, we're going to move um, and this, present Aqua 3S, starting uh, by the architecture and uh, the Aqua 3S platform. So, um, okay, um, is there a problem? Can you see my uh, presentation? Uh, Good or no? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So uh, I will continue with the platform architecture. So uh, which is the bottom line, the uh, the the, uh, the core of the Aqua 3S platform. So we had uh, actually three prototypes developed, uh, starting from the skeleton. The first prototype was the skeleton of the Aqua 3S system, which was let's say envisioned the solution architecture. Moving to the second prototype. There was an enhancement of the functionalities by integrating several um, solutions like social network data, uh, sen uh, um, sensor data, and some sentinel data. And then in the third prototype, we had the complete and full functional platform. Uh, the Aqua 3 solution architecture uh, is uh, uh, designed uh, as in all, in all the, the architecture domain, business application, data technology, and security. So it's a layered application architecture which is quite typical. And uh, we have used the uh, open standards and open source tools as, man as much as possible. And of course, the Fireware Orion Context Broker, which plays the role of the data hub and uh, provides information about entities and uh, attributes. Uh, all the above in, um, uh, sources and uh, solutions were integrated into Aqua 3 platform. And uh, security was another aspect that we considered. Uh, and we were aligned with several international standards. So we followed several security measures like a role-based access control, network security, and containerization, which is uh, security is an aspect that uh, should be, of course, considered in uh, such systems, critical systems. Uh, here we can see the evolution of the Aqua 3S uh, platform from the first prototype gradually to the second, where we have more working solutions, and to the third, where everything seems to be working. Um, moving now to the innovation technologies uh, that uh, we were developed to support and ensure the safety of water networks. Uh, two sensors were actually created and uh, um, by within Aqua 3S. Uh, the mid-infrared um, quantum cascade laser-based sensor, which actually provides uh, information about the presence of ammonia in the water. And this is the uh, sensor uh, as it was uh, created by Mearsens and DevZU with uh, the vaporization hardware unit, the data acquisition, and uh, all the uh, packets and close up the, of the hardware parts. Uh, this um, sensor received measurements every, could provide measurements every six minutes and it, it allowed remote access uh, for the user and online transmission of the data to the platform. And uh, the current limit of detection was 0 0.5 ppm in field conditions. The other sensor was the RI sensor, a refractive index sensor that monitors uh, the array of the water samples, providing some early warning signals in order to inform the um, water operators about the water, water, water pollutant concentration where, when it surpasses critical values. The design of the RI sensor was composed of two main parts, the photonic platform and the electronics hardware. What was achieved was the development of this, of course, sensor with the novel features, the extended evaluation tests, uh, and the progress of the photonic chips and the microfluidics order. 
integration uh, with the fiber platform and the, the real data transmission to aqua CS platform. Several pre-pilot activities were realized in order to validate the results and the, the outcome and the measurements of the RI sensor. And of course, the RI sensor was operated in real time in pilots. Moving now to the data from coming from other sources like UAVs and the satellite data. These were used to identify and localize events threatening water safety and security. Regarding satellite imagery, Copernicus data were used and um, several types of analysis were made on, uh, using this data like flood detection, spill formation detection, algae plume detection, using state-of-the-art deep learning techniques. And uh, based on the outcome of this, uh, alerts were sent to the users whenever certain uh, thresholds were overpassed. Then we have also the object detection using uh, detection using drone or CCTV data. This was realized for security purposes. So was the aim was the detection of unauthorized presence of uh, humans and vehicles near water resources, uh, which was critical in cases of events. Uh, so we have analyzed videos and images containing detected objects and annotated with bounding boxes. Again, alerts were sent to the platform whenever such um, um, uh, objects uh, were detected. Going to the social media monitoring. So uh, in Aqua 3S, we monitor the water quality along with the flood uh, and or drought uh, detection events. So Twitter API was used as the main um, uh, social media platform uh, and um, the search criteria were defined by the end user partners. Uh, we have uh, done several post-processing uh, of uh, the data in order to uh, improve uh, the um, uh, tweets that were um, gathered by relevance estimation in order to remove uh, not related tweets in order also with geotagging in order to be able to put uh, the tweets on the map and event detection, which involved grouping the tweets based on location and time. Um, and for the 40 months of the project, uh, one, over 1 million uh, tweets were collected. And these are, uh, we have kept some, several statistics in order to be able to track um, uh, what has been done. Always following uh, the, um, GPR and, and then the rules of uh, Twitter. Going to the data collection from multiple sources. So all the aforementioned information um, were gathered and uh, there was continuous and real time and seamless collection of this data. They were indexed and stored in um, using Orion and CILD broker. Uh, so this, it was necessary to determine the data structures and the communication of the channels. Uh, SFTP clients were created and integrated to get this data. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there were geo layers stored in the geo server, and uh, Orion will be holding information about uh, sensors and satellite information. Going to the multi level semantic enrichment, reasoning, and fusion methodologies, how this was achieved. So this involved actually data harmonization, which uh, and uh, and which uh, would assist interoperability among uh, heterogeneous data. So this was achieved by using um, and standardizing the data that uh, were received via fiber data models. So within Aqua 3S, um, several partners were involved in order to create uh, such models. For example, for capturing satellite imagery models, social media data, call complaints, risk assessment data, anomalies model, etc. Of course, uh, existing fiber data models were also reused. All these models are, of course, open and free according to fiber. Uh, moving on to the, to the ontology. Okay, we have extended the ontology, etc., and the uh, VSRF and SRF of water ontologies. And um, uh, we move to the integration layer and the multimodal indexing. So uh, we have deployed uh, all of this uh, heterogeneous data for water quality and created the appropriate indices to allow the querying and efficient retrieval of all the data. Uh, with, the, with that considered, we have, have the Orion LD context proctor that holds the current state of the system, the Cygnus for the historical data, the GeoServer for the georeference data, and WebDAV for sharing binary objects and uh, documents. Um, for threat detection, 
there was the EPANET model that was used to detect and locate anomalies in the network. So that uh, the pressure sensor measurements were used and they, they were done some analysis on them. Anomaly localization was done based on anomaly detection and the EPA network network modeling. It should be mentioned also that we uh, did also optimization and parallelization of the anomaly detection module. Uh, and um, this was performed the profiling of the OWA EPANET using the anomaly detection module. And uh, many bottlenecks have been identified. And uh, eventually, a uh, parallelization has been done on the hydraulic coefficient, coefficients. And uh, there was very good results. I would say, uh, let's say, up to 50% almost of computing time was uh, reduc uh, reduced. We have also the crisis management modeling for enhanced preparedness that allows the stakeholders for water infrastructure in assessing their preparedness level against a series of hazardous events. Thus, a user is able to select among hazardous events and formulate uh, in a three, crisis, a three crisis macro stages. And this was used as a guide to begin setting up the crisis management plan and to help them uh, uh, take, consider some recommendations and uh, assess their system, how well it uh, uh, captures and uh, is able uh, to, uh, uh, to find their strengths and weaknesses and improve in preparedness. Going to the warning and support system, uh, we have two actual visualization um, uh, modules, the 3D visualization that actually captures information from sensors and EPANET. Uh, it, it visualized also graphs from historic sensor data and uh, the visual analytics that have data from uh, satellite, social media and UAVs. This was also a map based, but there's also a GIS and a graph based solution for capturing data from Twitter and control planes and the GIS for capturing data from satellite, tweets, and drones. Several other UI functionalities were uh, integrated for filtering, clustering, and provided metadata for all this information. Closing with the early warning and crisis assessment algorithm, we have the um, IMM module, which was used to simulate and evaluate. This was a tool for simulating and evaluated um, a tool that allowed the users to modify and design intervention solutions and to, uh, to also, uh, this was using a heuristic algorithm to reduce the number of simulations required to identify a, opt a near optimal solution in near real time. And it also was used to identify the optimal time to repair a broken pipe, as, as well as applying possible intervention um, in a, a network. Moving to the crisis classification decision support, uh, three tools were involved, the flood monitoring, which involved uh, creating a flood hazard vulnerability exposure and risk maps by considering machine learning methods and rule-based approaches. We had the management of water resources, water demand forecast was uh, one of the models that was created for uh, providing water demand forecast that could help, let's say, um, water operators uh, to uh, actually forecast the water demand and uh, change um, uh, the strategy. The management and also data imputation in order to uh, fill in missing or invalidated data and also the ability to detect abnormal water quality events. Decision support also was used to produce uh, historic alerts uh, through a report, uh, which involved the use of a knowledge base. Then we move to the social interaction. So uh, there was a warning message generation to the public. So a warning message generation framework was created for quickly and effectively constructing the warning messages. This was a language agnostic framework uh, based on the common alerting protocol. And um, there were standardized messages created between the languages of the project when the user could uh, select from predefined inputs uh, or add free text. All this information were, let's say, put on the aqua platform. And we can see here some screenshots of the platform from the maps, the graphs, the alerts, the anomalies, the file management, and the visualization of continuity strategy. Uh, and all these were actually part and will be seen as part of the seven pilots that will be presented uh, in the sequel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Natasha. <clears throat> Thank you for the presentation. Um, outstanding uh, topics, outstanding results, outstanding 
ambitions as well. Um, now I think that's, uh, we should start I mean, entering into the, the deep of the pilots. So I kind of invite you to introduce the pilots uh, uh, represented as speakers. Thank you. So, so I would like to present Francesca Lombardo, which is uh, from uh, Agua, and she will present uh, the pilot on modern and safety and security of the Trieste Aqueduct. Hi, Francesca. Hello, good morning to everyone. I'm Francesca Lombardo, an engineer from uh, AWA, and with my presentation, I representing the three partners which are responsible for the implementation of the pilot use case one of the AquaFries. So I'm going to share my presentation. So do you see my presentation? Okay. So, as I introduced, this presentation is about the first pilot use case of the AquaTrias project, which is the Italian pilot use case, and is about monitoring the safety and security of the Trieste Aqueduct. This is one of the seven pilot use cases of the project, uh, which mean a sort of context and environment when the AquaFries technology were deployed and tested during the project. Uh, the area involved by the pilot are the city of Trieste in the eastern part of Italy, yeah. but also the Zonzo River Plan, which is the area where the main sources of water for the city yeah. are located. As anticipated, yeah. there are three partners responsible for the pilot implementation. AWA, which is a, a water district authority of the Oriental Alpes River District, a public body in charge for the uh, flood risk management or river basin management in the, in the Oriental Alpes River District, including the city of Trieste. Then we have AAA, Acegas APS AMGA, which is a, a, a multi utility, uh, which overall is in, uh, is, in, is in charge for manage the water distribution and water supply network of Trieste. And then we have uh, LH2, which is a local health agency. So just to provide uh, some uh, brief information about the pilot, uh, the water distribution supply system of Trieste is quite unique in Italy because due to the karst topography of the area, we have not, unlike other cities in Italy, close water sources to the city, so water has, uh, has to be supplied from farther area. For example, of the wells in the Isonzo River Plain, as well as secondary sources, which are the River Sardus, Ablicis, and Timavo. So, uh, for this reason, the network the distribution system is very complex. The colleague of AAA managed a complex system of uh, qualitative and quantitative sensor, as well as a remote control system. Moreover, the, uh, some part of the distribution of spray network fall in flood risk area according to the mapping of our flood risk management plan. So uh, how does in practice uh, work the pilot implementation in AquaFries? We as uh, industry partners identify some current gaps in uh, current, uh, some current gaps and that we would like to fill during the project. So based on this gap, we define the objective uh, of AquaFries and during the project lifetime, the, the consortium deploys some solution to fill in the gaps. For example, one of these gaps regard the flood risk management. We have, as I told before, some predefined flood risk and hazard map in our flood risk management plan, which are based on some predefined flood scenario defined by the, um, the, the regulation. By the way, when a real flood occurs, the situation might be uh, a bit different from the predefined scenario. So what is very important and what is missing is a tool able to, to provide a real-time dynamic flood rates and hazard map based on the real uh, situation. And in order uh, to overcome this gap, Aquatria has proposed a different solution. 
uh, based mostly on the satellite uh, image uh, analysis for detecting uh, the extension of the dead area, as to well as to uh, spatial map of hydraulical variables and provide flood risk and hazard mapping. And another uh, complementary information are provided by the social media analysis tool. Another gap is that, uh, in particular, during increasing the situation, there could be an overload of information of various, various kind of, of uh, heterogeneous format. For example, since the data, results of model, but also social media data could complain. And so for the operator, often it is difficult and time consuming to go through all this information that sort for the relevant or irrelevant ones. Moreover, uh, uh, often this information Quite different to uh, different software to be processing and analyzed. So, Aqua Triage's proposed solution basically is an integrated data acquisition and visualization of uh, the different uh, useful data set. Another gap is strictly related to the role of the colleague from AAA in the context of reduction of the water safety plan. In this context, it's different to associate of, to all the possible, possible pollutant sources identify, identified the various dangerous uh, events and hazard. So in order to overcome these gaps, Aquatrias proposed uh, multiple innovative sensors uh, like the RAI and ammonia sensor, as well as uh, uh, optimization parallelization algorithm, anomaly, det anomaly detention, trip detention algorithm, crisis management modeling, and many other tools. So the aqua 3 uh, second prototype was successfully tested in the context of the PUC-1 during a real-time uh, um, trial took place in May 2022 uh, in two places in parallel, the one the main control room in the AEA premise in Trieste, and then uh, in parallel in an operational room in the AEA premise in San Giovanni di Tuino near the water treatment plant of the Timavo River when the uh, aqua sensor uh, were installed. The trial focused on three different scenarios. One was about uh, a normal situation and two about a uh, crisis situation. So uh, in the first scenario, the goal was to show how the platform can be integrated in normal condition for monitoring the network. That the mean monitoring uh, continuously the sensor, acquiring real-time data, but also monitoring social media, satellite image, integrating the hydraulic model. The first crisis scenario instead focused on a real um, a real weather event, the Louis storm, which impacted the area in November 2019. And due to this uh, storm, in that period, the water level of the Zunsu River were particularly high. So uh, during the, uh, the pilot, we simulated the blackout of the wells, which are the main supply of uh, water for Trieste, which are located close to the river. Uh, so the Aquatrias platform uh, promptly notified the anomaly in the status in the sensor status. Thanks to the satellite data analysis, we were able to estimate the water level and the water flow of the, of the river. And the social media analysis provide useful information for the situation. In parallel, because of the same uh, weather event in the city of Trieste, an exceptional high tide event occurred with a flooding uh, in the area near the harbor. And so in this scenario, we simulate a breakage of uh, one pipe of the distribution system uh, located in the flooded area. So firstly, we have a crisis classification identif which identified from satellite data the extension of a flooded area and provide real-time flood risk and hazard mapping. The, the anomaly detection module helped to identify in the hydraulic uh, modeling of a net network, uh, an Ethernet model, the specific pipe uh, which uh, was broken. Uh, and then we have the information management model, which help the, manage, uh, the manager of the network to provide suggestions about how, how to operate in the network during the reparation time. 
The second scenario uh, was about a contamination of micro my, microbiological agents in the Timago River, which is the secondary water sources for the city. During this scenario, uh, a key role was played by the aqua and RI ammonia sensor installed uh, here. Uh, they, they promptly notificate the um, the alert uh, referring to some threshold defined by, um, by the user. And then a, a colleague followed the internal uh, procedure to manage with uh, such kind of uh, hazard. And then the post preparedness tool of Aquatrias provide an assessment of the preparedness of the system uh, post-event again that specific hazard. Uh, during the pilot, uh, the participants were asked to fill uh, in a questionnaire regard, uh, regarding both their experience during the pilot, but uh, some questions about the, the Aquatrias platform as a whole and the single component. Uh, overall, the feedback gained from the participants were very positive because they recognized the useful of the, of the platform and the single components and uh, the good the pilot as environment to testing the platform. Just to provide some final insights about our experience, first of all, it was very evident from the outcome of the pilot that Aquatrias is a useful tool for helping monitoring our supply and distribution network, both in the standard situation, but in, during a crisis of different nature. And the experience of the project shows also that the heterogeneous data collection analysis provide a very value, valuable information in addition to the standard information that come from a sensor network. And that uh, aquifer solution is flexible enough to be integrated in this in uh, existing procedure with existing uh, legacy system and in different uh, contexts. By the way, it's also important to point yeah. out that platform like this shouldn't be meant uh, either as uh, nor as replacement of the existing legacy system, nor worse as uh, a substitution from human decision, but they are be have been used as a support as the integration of uh, both things. So with this, I'm finished and thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, Francesca. For your great presentation. So I would suggest to move on to the next one, the presentation of the pilot case from Thessaloniki from Katerina Christodoulou from AI. Hello. Hi Katerina. Hello, I will share my screen. Mm, one moment. Okay. Okay, you can see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So I will, I'm here to uh, present the second pilot use case of Aliakonas River and uh, Thessaloniki Water Treatment Plan Monitoring. Uh, we have to say that Thessaloniki, together with the city of Brussels and Paris, are the three cities that were able to test the last, uh, the third uh, prototype of the Aqua 3S uh, platform. And more specifically, the pilot of Thessaloniki was, uh, took place in October, and uh, the two partners involved was uh, Thessaloniki Water Supply and Steward Service Company, AIAFSA, and the Department of Public Health and Social Care of the Regional Authority of uh, Central Macedonia. Uh, some words about um, us the partners. EAS is the second largest uh, Greek water utility providing drinking water supply and steward services in the greater metropolitan area of Thessaloniki. Uh, this means that it serves 1 million inhabitants and to do so it uses the water resources of uh, mostly of Aliakmonas uh, river and of Aravisos groundwater springs. RCM is the public 
public authority that operates at regional level and is there to supervise water companies like AIAF uh, to make sure that the water supply to the customers uh, complies with uh, legislation. Uh, we have um, carefully uh, sorry, we have carefully uh, chosen our pilot area based on the fact that Aliakmonas River is the major uh, water resource for the city. So our long aquatic uh, route uh, in the Aqua 3S uh, project begins at the Polyphytos Reservoir, which is a large artificial lake that was created several decades ago by the, by the construction of uh, dams on, on the Aliakmonas uh, River. Then Aliakmonas uh, River goes on, meeting some smaller dams, and it reaches a point where part of its flow is diverted uh, to an open uh, water transportation channel and at some part it is closed and brings the water to be treated at a three-stage procedure in uh, the Thessaloniki drinking water treatment plant. As you can see, our aquatic route of this pilot is quite long. It's more than 100 kilometers. And this means we have uh, to face, and we actually face several risks of uh, potential uh, water pollution events due to the multiple anthropogenic actions and uh, land uses at the area. Uh, our uh, objectives for the pilot to uh, our pilot demonstration uh, to be fulfilled during this project was that we wanted to be able to detect a pollution event as soon as possible and also to be able to locate its location and their possible pollution uh, source, to be able to visualize all different types of uh, data on a single platform and to estimate as soon as possible the impact of the pollution on the Thessaloniki water treatment plant processes. Also, we needed uh, tools to uh, help us react uh, rapidly and to communicate rapidly with RCM to take uh, appropriate decisions. So uh, the, to achieve this, we thought that the best way would be to have two scenarios of pollution events to be demonstrated at the, with uh, the Aqua 3S platform that would be based on actual uh, real events of pollution that took place at this uh, area. Uh, the first event at uh, 2019 was that of uh, the accidental dispose of uh, organic fertilizer, which was rich in nitrogen, in uh, the open channel that we saw. And that was a mistake due to some agricultural uh, actions, uh, activities at the area. Uh, at uh, the beginning, the first indication was only a turbidity increase at the sensor of Rakhia station, uh, which gave actually no clue to the operators of the treatment plant what was all about. Uh, so after some hours, unfortunately, the pollution of uh, ammonia uh, arrived at the treatment plant, causing actually uh, the total consumption of ozone and chlorine uh, also at the final uh, disinfection system. So this has a great impact on the treatment plant and we had to shut down uh, the water supply drinking the city of Thessaloniki for almost 12 hours. So this is actual our uh, monitoring uh, stations and uh, network at that time. And now uh, during the Aqua 3S project, we were able to enhance our sensor uh, network by 
uh, installing uh, new uh, sensors at the inlet of the treatment plant, that of ammonium analyzer, the refractive index sensor, and a total organic carbon analyzer that we have uh, bought. And uh, also to in enhance our uh, surveillance system and our safety at the open uh, water transportation channel with drone flights and with CCTV cameras that were installed. And uh, the second uh, past event of uh, pollution was an oil spill pollution that happened on the Polyphytos, at the Polyphytos Reservoir uh, on uh, 2018. And uh, that was actually kind of a silent pollution event because no one was then able to detect uh, an oil spill so far away from the treatment plant and on the surface of the reservoir. So after a, a lot of hours, uh, the hydrocarbons um, arrived at the treatment plant. Uh, we were able to detect them at the lab. Uh, they were saturated hydrocarbon of pure diesel that have uh, caused difficulties in treatment and irreversi irreversible and expensive damage to granular activated carbon beds. So, so with uh, during the project, we have incensed in case as already said, uh, our sensor at the inlet uh, of the treatment plant with total organic carbon analyzer and the refractive index sensor that was developed in uh, the project. And, uh, and we, we have been able to test a new tool, uh, that of the satellite images analysis uh, as an early warning uh, a tool uh, for the presence of uh, oil spill and other formations on the surface of uh, Polyphytos Reservoir. Of course, the drone flights were also there to um, uh, act um, uh, as a, a, an additional measure of monitoring the security of the area. So during our scenarios, uh, at the pilot demonstration, we have been able to integrate all the data of existing sensors of uh, our uh, network, along with the new market, market sensors and the sensors developed within the Aqua 3S. Uh, we could see them and visualize uh, the sensors on an interactive GIS map along with their status, and we could see their uh, uh, data presented in graphs. Uh, we had uh, early warning systems through identification of anomalies and alerts on map, also on every screen, and um, by email notification. Uh, we have been using uh, this uh, very helpful tool of uh, land users, uh, land users uh, map layers. We could, we have been able to project the different uh, land users of the area on the same GIS map, so we could actually uh, understand the possible source of pollution and its location. And another helpful tool was the historic alert report, where we could uh, go back uh, at time and, pre and see uh, other uh, similar alerts from the system. Uh, by the satellite imagery driven detection we, that we have tested, uh, we have been able to see if it is possible uh, to uh, have an early warning system for oil pollution uh, formation on the surface of Polyphytos Reservoir. And by drones and cameras uh, detection, we, and, uh, we have been able to survey any straits activity at the area of the open channel. Of course, we have, re we have been receiving relative warnings during our uh, pilots on the Aqua 3S uh, platform. Uh, another helpful tool was uh, to, to test was the warning generation tool uh, that helped us create standardized messages 
to communicate with our uh, consumers about uh, the water supply and um, the pre-assessment as uh, preparedness assessment and the reporting tool was really helpful uh, in order for us to see the assessment reports during uh, before crisis uh, during the crisis and the post crisis in, in uh, order to identify our vulnerabilities and to take uh, preventive actions and uh, small, uh, sm a small tool, but very helpful, was uh, the file manager tool to easily share files with uh, RCM partners through the platform and actually through the crisis. This is how we have shared the videos and the photos from Polyphytos Reservoir, from the flights of the drone and uh, the cameras. Uh, at the end of the pilot demonstration, there was the evaluation uh, uh, process where all the participants at the pilot uh, have uh, filled out some uh, questionnaires with uh, several uh, questions. Here I have only an example of the answers uh, to the question if the scenario of the exercise was realistic. And as we see, the participants seem to be uh, to strongly agree that it was a very realistic uh, scenario since we try to be ba uh, based on our previous experience. Um, another question is uh, uh, if uh, they, how the users feel about the time needed uh, by the use of PACWA 3S platform to search for uh, crisis relevant information. And we see that the users agree that less time was needed again by the use of the Aqua 3S platform. Let me say that uh, these are the results also for the Saloniki pilot and for the pilot of uh, Brussels. So after the pilot demonstration at Thessaloniki and after its evaluation, we have been able to see that it is um, a, a very helpful uh, platform to provide solutions uh, to most of our uh, objectives that, and targets that we have set at the beginning of the project. Uh, we have to just notice that uh, as it is uh, normal, real time and online testing of some tools of the Aqua 3S platform was not technically possible for all uh, uh, the tools. So uh, we believe that the development of a fully operational Aqua 3S platform and uh, hopefully commercial version of the platform will uh, need some more, uh, a little bit more technical elaboration. And then we are sure that the Aqua 3S platform would be really an asset in water utilities crisis management and the routine operation as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Katerina. It was a really nice presentation of your pilot. So uh, let's uh, move on to the next uh, pilot and the next presentation by Stéphane de Vegel and the pilot from Paris. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Natasha. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Can you try one more once more, please? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you can see your screen, not the representation. Okay, thank you. It's okay. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, so I am Stéphane Devegel and I work in a, in um, Suez Smart Solution, which is a subsidiary of a Suez Group uh, dedicated to the water sector and to the waste sector. And uh, I'm going to present to you uh, the pilot site, the French pilot site, monitoring safety and security of the Ceneo water supply system. 
Um, so the, the, the pilot is located uh, near Paris. This is the west of Paris. And in this uh, short table, you can see really the, the key words um, characterizing the French demo case. So work with reliable measurements. It is also called data imputation in the field of data science, forecast water demand, detect abnormal water quality events, improvement of operational efficiency, online integration, systems interoperability. So this is really keywords that I'm going to detail in the next slide of my presentation. Um, so about the pilot overview. So it is located in the west of Paris and the partners uh, involved in the in the French demo case are uh, 3S, my company. So we are software developer and we also integrate uh, IT solution based on our tools or, or other tools uh, for the water sector. Um, another partner uh, strongly involved in the French demo case, this is CERT, the leader of this project. So this is the Center for Research and Technology. And you can see the activities of this entity, research, development and innovation. Uh, another academic partner is the uh, ICCS, Institute of Communication and Computer System of the National Technology University of Athens in Greece, in, in the same field of uh, activity. And um, so general description of the French demo case. So you can see here on the right side of my, of my slide. So I'm going to use the pointer laser. Um, so you can see the, the frontiers of Paris, and in the red line, on the red line, this is the territory covered by the French demo case. So this is the west of Paris, and this is the contract that uh, Ceneo has, that uh, Suez has with the public client Ceneo. So our pilot site is the drinking water supply system in overall. And the territory is uh, more than 600,000 inhabitants. You can see uh, the water sold per year. The network linear length is up to 1,000 kilometers. Um, this territory has 15 reservoirs. And what is really great in the, this uh, territory is that the number of um, automated the, the, the meters which are equipped with automated meter reading. This is up to 83%. So this is quite uh, huge for this kind of uh, territory. And um, another very interesting point, point, technical point for the French demo case is the number of uh, multi-parameter probes installed in the distribution network up to uh, 13. So this is really unique in France. And um, so about Ceneo, um, Ceneo is the second biggest producer and distributor of drinking water in France. So this is a big actor in France. And um, it, this territory covers up to 10 members municipalities. These are these municipalities uh, inside the red line. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, this contract is uh, to date managed by Suez since the 1st January of 2020. So really for us, the choice of, the, of, the, of this uh, territory was very important to conduct, to carry out uh, our experimentation for the French demo case. And it was really a great playground for us um, within, this, uh, within this project. So now uh, I'd like to present to you a slide dedicated to goals and objectives. So I'm not going to detail all these things, but what is important to have in mind is that on the, on the left part of this slide, this is the business goals uh, characterizing the French demo case. And uh, so I have mentioned three of them, uh, preserve water resources, meet water demand, and show water safety. And these business goals really drive uh, the French demo case. On the right side of this table, you can see the, te the corresponding technical goals. So we have, I have distinguished two of them. System is interoperability, which is a major theme of the Aqua 3S project, as well as for the Fireware for Water project, in which uh, 3S was also involved. And uh, the second technical goal is, is improvement of operational performance. And in the middle, you can see the different objectives that, um, that we have targeted for the French demo case. And for each of them, you can see the correspondence between business goals 
and the technical goals. For instance, um, you will see later an objective uh, aiming at detecting abnormal water quality events. So this objective uh, targets uh, the business goals entitled ensure water safety and uh, from a technical goals point of view it addresses improvement of operational performances and for each of these objectives you have this correspondence between business goals and uh, techni technical goals uh, what also important is that uh, I will, you will see later in the next slide that we carry out an online integration of different things that we have targeted uh, for this objective. So it address all the business goals uh, of the French demo case and the same for the technical goals. So if I summarize the main actions that we perform for the French demo case, we can distinguish three uh, actions. The first one is to develop scientific models and this work has been done, has been jointly done by 3S and CERF. Uh, the second action is to implement online data exchange so it address the major theme of systems interoperability and this work has been done by 3S and ICCS. And the last, the third and the last action is to develop IT functionality for aqua advanced production and transport. This is a software uh, a software product that um, published by 3S, because if you remember, we are a software publisher. And this is one of the, um, the products that we use for the French demo case. So about the action number one, develop scientific models. So we have developed three scientific models. The first one is dedicated to data imputation. Uh, also calls uh, data reconstruction. So the objective is to um, replace invalid data or missing data uh, occurring in the time series that a uh, water utility has to manage. So this, this, uh, prob this business issue is transversal to um, every uh, time series. This is a real problem, the capacity to replace by uh, correct value missing data or invalid data. And you can see here in the red, this is the reconstruction performed by the algorithms, because as you can see, there are lots of data missing from this time period. And in the same way, you can see that outliers like this one can be replaced by a, a correct uh, value. So this is a very important work on which uh, 3S works since uh, maybe uh, 20 years. And then through these projects, through the Aqua 3S project, we, we get very interesting results, maybe uh, not maybe, but more performant than the previous that we, that we had before in the past. Um, the second model was devoted to the forecast water demand. So this is the capacity to forecast water demand for a given uh, hydraulic area for uh, a time period ahead typically one week ahead and in the same way so we we build and design algorithms for different uh, hydraulic um, areas for the french demo case and you can see uh, at this place um, so uh, in the orange it was the observed the real observed data and this is the predicted data uh, done uh, calculated by the algorithms and on this slide you can see um, on this axe, the target and uh, the, the outputs, the corresponding output computed by the algorithms. And if you have a perfect model, that means that all the points are uh, located on this line. And you can see that sometimes the prediction is not uh, fully correct. But globally, we are very happy of the results that we have obtained for the different uh, hydraulic area. Of, uh, of the French demo case. And the last one is dedicated to the capacity to detect abnormal water quality events on the French, on the drinking water network. Uh, so as I said before, we have, um, there are uh, 30 uh, quality multi-parameter probe already installed in the network uh, uh, before the beginning of the project. And you can see, for instance, an event that we have detected, it corresponds to a high value of turbidity 
that the system has um, detected by running uh, these algorithms. Uh, an important point that I would like to share with you is that all these models have been uh, developed uh, by using uh, machine learning te techniques. This is the case for QS, but also for uh, TERS. Uh, so there are some further details in the deliverable uh, 5.3 if you are interested to, to have more, much more information about this, uh, this kind of topics. Action number two, uh, implement online data exchange. Um, so um, we wanted to illustrate through this project the system interoperability. Uh, I recall that this is a major theme for Aqua 3S on Fire of Water H2020 project and for other sister projects belonging to the cluster uh, Digital Water 2020. Um, this topic um, is based on the firewall technology, uh, which used the NGC LD uh, uh, standards. So the objective was to exchange data between two systems, A and B, in a simple, efficient, reliable, and cyber secure way um, through the Aqua 3S platform. So the Aqua 3S platform. Uh, plays the role of a data, data, data gateway between a system A and a system B. So in our case, what were a system A and B? Um, uh, it was the scientific platform. The scientific platform is, um, is a place uh, which hosts and runs uh, the, the different scientific model I just present to you. And this science platform is agnostic. That means that it can run uh, models uh, coming from the Aqua 3S project as the FireWave Water project. Because the architecture that I'm going to show you in the next slide is common to both projects, it was um, requirements that you wanted to address through both both projects. But the system B, so this is the product tool uh, published by 3S, Aqua Advanced Production and Transport. So the challenge is to be able to exchange data between both uh, systems through the Aqua 3S platform. So uh, as you can see, this is a conceptual scheme, but reality was uh, much more complex. And I'm not going to detail all this uh, architect technical architecture. Uh, so this is a real uh, uh, this is the on online implementation, and I remember I recall that it is common for Aqua 3S and Fire Water. So on the right side on this um, on this slide, you, you can see um, application which are in production. That means that thousands of users in France and worldwide use this tool to manage uh, their um, operation. And in order to avoid any uh, disturbances in production. So we, we have some copy of this uh, production. So these, these are uh, mirror applications. On the left side of uh, this slide, you can see the scientific platform um, hosting the scientific models. And you can see here the different uh, platform develop uh, either in the Aqua 3S platform or in the Fireware for Water uh, project. So, in the, in the green, in the green, this is the world of uh, the FireWave Water project. In blue, this is the world of uh, the Aqua 3S project. And in the middle, in the brown or orange, this is the components common to both uh, projects. Um, action, action number three, uh, develop IT functionality for Aqua Advanced Production and Transport. So the stakes was to improve the operational performance of drinking water supply systems. We have developed seven technical functionalities for this product. Uh, you can see uh, these seven functionalities that I'm not to, to go to, 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 to detail further. The first one um, aims at uh, computing and displaying uh, efficiency on performance uh, KPIs for the operator. The second one is to manage uh, annual volume uh, quotas uh, because um, uh, our product is able to compute uh, um, a management scenario over one week ahead. But sometimes we have some uh, uh, requirements, we have some uh, obligation to respect uh, uh, volume uh, quotas 
a schedule uh, for a whole year. Um, the third uh, functionality is the system event view. So this is very important. Is this is the place where an operator can uh, have uh, a view summarizing the different events occur in uh, its uh, system. For instance, if a level of a reservoir is too low, you will have an event display on this view. Um, the same if, if a pump is out of order or a gate is out of order. Um, Functionality number four, maintenance operation view. So this is a view which displays to the operator. This is a kind of calendar in which the operator can schedule the different uh, maintenance operation in the future. And this is very important because this product um, aims at computed uh, prediction from a hydraulic term uh, point of view, meaning that it tries to uh, meet the water demand uh, seven days a week and uh, 24 hours a day by taking into account the available equipment in the in the, 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 the water uh, supply system. So if a gate is out of order, the, the optimization uh, process will not based on this um, equipment which is unavailable. So this is very important to, to schedule uh, uh, all the maintenance operation uh, to sure to be sure that we the system is able to meet the water demand uh, in the future. Functionality number five. Uh, this is a very technical uh, functionality aiming at introducing in this system new operational optimization constraint. For instance, if you if you know that your system, if a pump number one should work simultaneously with a pump number two, so you can introduce this kind uh, of a constraint in the in the um, optimization uh, problem. Uh, functionality number seven. This is a simulation interface in which you can see the results of uh, the hydraulic simulation based. Uh, on the optimization constraint that you have uh, mentioned uh, before for the optimization problem. And uh, the, the functionality level number seven is the capacity to uh, trigger different uh, module uh, uh, hosting uh, in this, uh, uh, sorry, this is the possibility to trigger different scientific module hosting by, by this module. Um, so, uh, what is important for us is that all these functionality to date are available in the product. So, the new version that we propose to our client includes this um, this functionality. This is a really important outcomes, uh, which were possible uh, with the Aqua 3S project. And uh, there are more details about this uh, functionality in the deliverable uh, 8.3. So, you can see briefly some uh, a snapshot um, of the product. So you can see here uh, some KPIs computed by the system related to efficiency and performance measurements. So you can see here the, the assets available uh, for the system, uh, for the production plants, for the pumping station, for the, the capacity of uh, storage for the reservoir and for the gates. And uh, you have also different uh, KPIs, different uh, values computed for uh, the production, the current uh, flow, the unavailable flow, the daily volume produced by the system, and so on. Here you can see what I mentioned before, the system event view. So you can see some, you have located on a map uh, different uh, equipment. You, you can see different icons for the reservoir, for the gates, and you have a table here mentioning uh, some equipments or, or some works for which there are uh, some problems. For instance, here, um, all these things mention that uh, the, the level of um, each reservoir is too low. And so this is very simple for an operator to have a clear view, a simple view of the different events occurring in the drinking water supply system. And the last few in terms of illustration, this is the maintenance operation view. So this is the calendar I just mentioned before, uh, in which the operator schedule uh, some uh, operation, uh, some maintenance operation. So you can see that uh, uh, at this place for this uh, reservoir, there is an operation of uh, aiming at cleaning a compartment of a reservoir. 
And you can see here that uh, it is uh, it is scheduled that there will be a stop of um, of uh, I don't know what exactly, but all these things can be a schedule um, in this kind of uh, calendar. So this is very useful for uh, for the for the operator. And uh, to conclude, so for me uh, it was really a great a great collaboration with the Aquarius Consortium in a whole. And I would like to um, address a special thanks to Third on ICCS, which uh, strong, which were strongly involved in the French demo case. Uh, so for us um, about the firewall technology, so it was um, a great overview um, about this technology, which, which was uh, completely unknown for us at the beginning of the project, but. Um, as we are a water utility, so to disseminate this technology within our product and in the water utilities uh, sites, so we need a larger scale implementation to, to better assess the potential of this technology. But it was a good step uh, ahead um, in this sense. And about perspective, so if I go back to the, the term uh, system interoperability, uh, so really for us, the question is, uh, could be the Aqua FUS platform or the FireWave water platform, a data gateway for the water utility, um, for the IT system of water utilities. And just to, to, to illustrate that, um, as you can see, this is the different uh, IT um, components uh, with which an operator should interact to manage his uh, water system. So there are numerous uh, uh, IT systems, SCADA, data historian, hydraulic model, asset management, client complaints. And most of the time, there are lots of links between SCADA and the other uh, components. And for me, the question is, would be the future, this picture, meaning that an aqua platform will be a data gateway between all these components uh, within uh, the IT system of a water uh, utility. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. Thank you, Stefan, very much. Thank you, Stefan. May I also recommend the speakers to keep the time, please. We are, we are a bit behind the schedule. Okay. Sorry for that. No worries. So let's move to the next pilot. We have Solomon Saralambos uh, from the pilot in uh, uh, Le Mesos in Cyprus. Sorry. Hello, everyone. Uh, Thank you so you can see my screen? Yes, thank you. Um, well, I'm Solomon Sara Lambus, I'm from the Water Broth or LMSOs. And uh, our uh, pilot was for the monitoring of the desalinated and treated surface uh, water uh, in our system. Uh, our operational test was uh, realized in February this uh, year. Uh, an overview of the pilot. Um, well, the Water Board of Lemesos is a non-profit uh, organization responsible for the supply of potable water to the metropolitan area of Lemesos and some uh, neighboring communities. Uh, the main source of water uh, is the treated surface water from Kuris Dam and uh, <coughs> the desalinated water from the Piscovit desalination plant. Uh, the treated surface water and the desalination, uh, desalinated water accounts to about 70 to 80% of the total uh, daily supply. Uh, the rest, uh, 20 to 20 to 30% of the uh, daily supply is from groundwater. Uh, the treated surface water and then desalinated water are managed by the government and the water port of Lemesos purchases the water in uh, bulk quantities uh, at their reservoirs. Um, this government uh, water supply system, as you can see with the blue line here, uh, is consists of the uh, treatment work, uh, treatment plant, and 
at the east of Lemesos, and also the desalination plant uh, at the west uh, of Lemesos. And uh, this, uh, syst these two plants are connected with the main uh, pipe, uh, the blue line here. And along this uh, pipe, uh, there are connections to uh, the water pulse uh, reservoirs. Um, here is a, a, a schematic of these uh, connections. Uh, this system supplies about 66% of uh, all the consumers of uh, the water port, approximately 112,000 citizens. Uh, the problems <coughs> which arise with uh, which we have with this system is that uh, there is a different chemical composition of the uh, desalinated water and the treated uh, surface water. Uh, there are um, frequent stops of operation of the desalination plant due to uh, faults or maintenance. And also the climate change in the region uh, affects the water quality of the water uh, and also the quantities of the water in the dam. And uh, also there are frequently uh, frequent algae blooms uh, incidents in, in, the, uh, in the dam. So the water quality uh, in this system is not uniform and changes very often. Uh, our goals and objectives, uh, um, there is a need uh, for an online monitoring system for the quality of the water since uh, currently we are monitoring uh, the quality with uh, regular chemical and uh, bacteriological analysis, uh, which is a very uh, consuming process. Uh, there is a difficulty in relating the different water quality complaints with the water quality in the system. And also there is a need for uh, an early warning uh, uh, in the event of uh, um, a quality in incident. Uh, either is uh, due to uh, faulty sensors or uh, other uh, um, events. Uh, our scenario, uh, the, the main steps of the scenario is uh, the online monitoring of the water quality uh, parameters in three reservoirs. Uh, in three reservoirs, you have installed uh, um, water quality sensors, um, three sets, uh, one at every reservoir, uh, every set. <clears throat> consisted of uh, um, seven, six, sorry, uh, eight different uh, parameters of water. It's chlorine residual, conductivity, pH, temperature, uh, oxygen reduction, potential sensor, total organic carbon uh, uh, sensor, UV, and turbidity. Uh, the um, the sensor set were uh, installed and connected with the SCADA system. And uh, the measurements are, were forwarded to the um, uh, Agua 3S platform. Um, to start with, we, we monitored the uh, sensors and uh, adjusted the thresholds uh, in order to uh, adjust the high and low alarm. Um, the second step of the scenario was uh, that the desalination plan stopped its operation. And uh, this was detected um, by the reduction of the water conductivity in the reservoir very near to the um, uh, desalination plant. 
uh, a warning message was generated and transmitted uh, to the operators. And uh, this event was uh, confirmed by the water treatment plant operators. The second step was uh, that the, uh, through the platform, uh, we had uh, detected uh, archaic blooming in Kuris Dam. Uh, this was with the satellite image analysis tool. Uh, a notification to the treatment plan was uh, done uh, in order to increase uh, so that they knew that there was an increase in archae blooming. Uh, after that, the, after the stop of the desalination plant, uh, the water treatment plant increased the volume of the treated uh, water. And uh, after that, due to the um, archae blooming in, uh, in the dam, there were a relative number of uh, complaints about odor uh, from, uh, and this, this call, these complaints were received by the call center. Uh, and uh, all the, all these uh, calls were transmitted to the platform and visualized uh, on, on, the, on the screen. Uh, and finally, the operators analyze uh, this situation and understand uh, what was the problem and uh, what uh, causes uh, all these uh, uh, complaints. Uh, and uh, due to that, the uh, water supply from the treatment plant was disconnected and a reserve source was used. This, this was a, a scenario of our uh, pilots. Uh, the use, uh, the tools we used uh, for this uh, pilot was the online monitoring of water quality sensors. Here you can see some screenshots from the pilot. Uh, we can see the uh, time series of the measurements, uh, the adjust of the, um, alarm thresholds and uh, from here we can also uh, have anomaly detection and uh, early warning uh, message transmission and also alert uh, we can also have alert history the second tool was the algae bloom detection uh, again some um, screenshots from the uh, pilots. On here you can see that uh, uh, archaea blooming is, is, is small. In this screen, the is uh, getting more and more. And here you can see uh, the archaea blooming is, is is very high, and you can see the the um, difference with the different color, colors. Um, there is an analysis of uh, what the color coding uh, is and how much uh, uh, chlorophyll in, in the water there is. And also, we can also have here a simulation period selection. The last uh, tool we have used is, is the core complaints. Um, all the uh, complaints arriving in the uh, call center, they are uh, archived uh, and transmitted to our JS uh, system. Um, after that, the data is filtered in order to remove uh, sensitive data and uh, transmitted to the Agua3S platform. So here we have visualization of all the uh, water quality related complaints. We have localization on the map and uh, we can also select the period and visualize all the messages uh, on the screen. 
Uh, our evaluation for the uh, Agua Fries platform is that it's a new innovative, uh, it, it, cre it creates innovative tools for the monitoring of the water quality. It's adaptable to various uh, applications and scenarios. It has a very uh, user-friendly uh, environment and the collection and analysis of all water quality related data, data on a single platform provides efficiency in data processing, minimization of the data collection and processing errors, minimization of the data collection and processing time. All the data is stored in a single place and there is access from various stakeholders involved with the uh, water quality. And finally, our uh, general thoughts is that uh, uh, new innovative systems for monitoring the water quality are necessary uh, for the water quality it was a, to, to every water utility. Uh, technologies is evolving uh, fast, the new tools and techniques are available. So we have to take advantage of these tools and provide uh, uh, water of good quality to all the people. So um, Agua Fries platform is a set of this uh, new innovative and user-friendly tools and techniques that uh, can uh, provide early detection of water quality related events. And it's a platform for monitoring the Safety of what? Thank you. Thank you very much, Solomé, for the presentation. Uh, I just to move on to the next one, to the next pilot from um, Eric Sofheit from uh, Brussels, Rivacqua, and the monitoring the, of the water supply system in the city of Brussels. Uh, hi, good morning. Hi, Eric. Hi, so I'm sharing my screen. You see my screen shared? Yes. Okay. Uh, so good morning again, everybody. So I will present uh, the pilot uh, number five. So as you see, it's quite co cold in Belgium, but I'm not in Belgium. And uh, after, uh, in my back, it's not Belgium. Uh, so this is the power of technology today, um, especially IT technology, but when it works. So during the project, we have made a lot of work, all of us. And we, I will show you today things which have really good, uh, we have been, which, which have been working well, in fact. So the pilot, it's a... Uh, simulation of pollution of in a drinking water distribution network and uh, so we have been using online monitoring complaints and tweets a brief overview of the pilot so it's uh, it's it was run in belgium so we uh, i'm working at the company vivacqua i'm water quality manager and so the water company vivacqua is providing drinking water to about 1.2 million people in Brussels and about 2.2 million people in Belgium. And it's a mix of groundwater, 65%, and surface water, 35%. So for this pilot, we were, of course, involved with Aqua, but also other partners, CERT from Greece, ICCS from Greece, University of Exeter in UK, and NTT Data located in Belgium. The playground, it's a city of Brussels. Here you, I show you a map. And in the, 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 the red zone, this is the zone we chose for, uh, uh, for the pilot itself. A general description of the pilot. So we are interested really in distribution network, uh, especially of our city. Uh, so we foresee an event where we have contamination which is spreading into the city network. So we choose a heavy rainfall, contamination of a groundwater. So if you see 
here on the south part of the map, the green dot, this is a production site. And then the contamination will spread into the distribution network. And then we have two other green dots, which represents monitoring stations into the city. With the blue arrows, you see the water flowing from the production site into the city, a part of the city, uh, which is a part of our uh, pilot. So we used uh, several online sensors, chemical sensors, physical chemical sensors, also microbiological sensors. Uh, what we did also, it's not using the same sensor from the same suppliers. So we use different suppliers, the same types of sensors, of course, but from different brands and suppliers, especially for the chemical and physical chemical online sensors. We also use the refractive index online sensor developed by ICCS, which is uh, quite innovative. And what we did also is really to run the pilot in real time. So what that does it mean? It means we create an event through injection. Uh, and I will explain a little bit later how. So we, we created an event in real time and also transfer from the data to the SCADA transfer from the data to Aqua 3S platform was also done in real time. And what we also choose, it's to, to make participate some of our operators, which are not really experienced with the platform. They had to learn quite quickly how to handle the platform. In fact, simulate the contamination network, we didn't contaminate the network itself. Uh, I will just tell you that um, it, it's a hydraulic pilot plan we built for the simulation of contamination. And in a, privacy, a, a previous uh, project, ISIS, which was a EU, a EU project, there we really did injections into the network uh, at that time. It was uh, several years ago. Now in the Aqua 3S project, we built really a small hydraulic uh, pilot plant, uh, just with a, a small scheme and to get similar kinds of signals uh, uh, showing you a contamination at one side spreading along other sites. So in our scenario, from a production site to two other monitoring stations located in the city. So we didn't really inject into the network of the city of Brussels. We injected in a pilot, hydraulic pilot plant. And so the pilot plant, you see a small schematics uh, where we could inject a contaminant at several stages, for example, here, uh, the B reservoir is simulate is uh, representing the, the point where we can inject in either one loop, a, a second loop or a third loop, representing the three sensors uh, stations. And so we can inject at either uh, level the contaminant. Our goals uh, with this pilot is really early detection of abnormal events, but again, in the distribution network, we have a, a huge uh, production network, which is quite well covered by online monitoring or already for many years with more than uh, 170 uh, online sensors. But in the distribution network, this kind of uh, practice is quite limited. As we heard uh, Stéphane from France, uh, these examples are quite rare today. There are not a lot of these uh, installation really in the network, distribution network. Uh, our second goal was also really to visualize uh, a lot of data uh, from different databases. This has also been explained by previous uh, presenters. Uh, of course, we have GIS, SCADA complaints, but most of the time they are not in the same system. So if you want to get a whole overview of your system, you need to consult different databases, which can be sometimes more difficult. The objective really for early detection in the distribution network, it's online sensors of different types, different brands, suppliers, and data visualization. Really, there it's to combine the information from online sensor complaint tweets, field interventions, also to have this information in real time and to be able to visualize it in real time. Also, to get graphical overviews of all the data which can be time related. It means you have real time, but you can go also to the past and to retrieve data of graphical historical data. 
So finally, the goal is really to visualize all the information in one overview in real time. Here you have just a, a screenshot of the pilot running at that time, so a few uh, weeks ago, uh, and really in real time. Our scenario, so to describe it shortly, so we start mostly with no normal running conditions. There, the operators we, we, uh, in the platform, aqua platform, can uh, look at online monitoring uh, sensors and, and the value generated. It can check alerts, uh, is everything is functioning, it can monitor the map overview, and it can consult all the data through graphs. And the first step of our scenario was contamination of the groundwater, again with our hydraulic pilot plant to simulate uh, the network. And there, the steps were, OK, you, you can receive an alert from a catchment site, for example, by email. And we, you can visualize the alert on a GIS map. You can check other data through graphs, like any other parameters, or complaints, for example, or tweets. And you can assess also, are you prepared? Uh, because something is happening. And are you prepared? What is your preparedness performance? And finally, if you decide something is happening, then you can fill online an incident form. So that's what we did during our scenario, main steps. Next, as always in a crisis, it starts, but it's going worse. So our scenario described first a transmission failure, which has not to, nothing to do with the AquaTrius platform. It's things happening. Most of, of the time when you have a crisis, you have several events happening. And unfortunately, they all happened most, most of the time at the same time. So we chose a transmission failure. So therefore, people are blind and they think everything is running more or less normally. Then through the platform, AquaTrius platform, we had an operator on site, which can confirm uh, the contamination of the catchment. This was the second step of that part of the scenario. Then the alert from other monitoring stations located in the distribution uh, network were received by mail. You can visualize then the alert through the map again. You can visualize also receive complaints because once it is in the distribution network, you have a lot of chance if people can see it, smell it, or whatever, you can receive complaints or tweets. And then you can activate what was already presented. It's a warning generation module. And then you can start really communication on crisis management, because there you conclude we have a problem. It's already in the distribution system. And then we have to start crisis management. So the platform allows all these steps to be done. So now it provides solutions, as I said. Uh, a lot of uh, good solutions were, uh, were working very well during the pilot. So if we look at early detection of abnormal events, uh, we have seen, OK, we, the platform allows diverse online multi-sensor stations to be connected, whatever the brand, whatever the supplier, even uh, developed uh, sensors during the project were allowed to be connected without any big problem. It allows also real-time transfer of data from SCADA to the AquaTrius platform. When you want to visualize the status of your network, in, the, in our case, distribution network, so we can show alarms, status on online sensors. And in red, collect all types of data in a single tool and offer really a graf graphical overview. According to us, these are new, really new uh, solutions, which do not always exist. I, I, don't, I never saw that in other systems, to have really an overview on the GIS map of all informations and collect all these type of information in only one single tool. You can also retrieve graphical historical data, of course. Then exchange of information, you can receive alerts by email. And it's also offer, offering a shared visualization to all people uh, concerned by the event. So this is also something not always available in many tools. Uh, the sharing visualization. Everybody has the same view, the same information, the same GIS maps. And this is very important to make people understand what is happening 
is to, to, to share the same information. Next, it's also allowing to coordinate the stakeholders so we can offer it, it offers registration of incident file in the same platform so you can register an incident you can consult your preparedness status and it so again helps to share information for crisis management which will be the next step if you cannot uh, avoid the crisis so these points in red are really new solutions uh, which are not really available in other systems today so the pilot was also uh, surveyed by the project partners about uh, 30 answers and here I, I took two graphs from the very huge survey we made uh, with all partners and uh, you see you have Brussels and Thessaloniki uh, for example when looking at where all the various functions well integrated the graph on the left most people agreed even strongly agreed for both pilots and if you take the other question most people would use it quite very quickly most people again participating to the project or looking at the project at the pilot agreed or strongly agreed both for brussels and thessaloniki so conclude general thoughts there are really key strong points in this uh, uh, aquatrius platform and which uh, appeared during the project so we see that uh, data from really different types of sensors uh, can be compiled in one database and can be really uh, visualized in real time uh, on a GIS interface in one GIS interface which is really a, a big step forward for us at least we also saw that it is quite user friendly and easy to use as I mentioned at the beginning we chose some of our operators which are which not, not really took part to the project at the beginning, but took part of the project at the end. So they had really not a lot of time to, um, to, be, uh, uh, yeah, to, to, to manage the system. And so they learned quite quickly, showing us that in fact, the system is easy to use even for people not really with a lot of experience. So we think it's improving really the, the global assessment when uh, there is a pre-crisis situation, things are starting, and it's not already a, a, a crisis, but it can become a crisis. So often you have to already act before it's becoming a crisis, if you can. So this tool can help this. And finally, it, can, uh, it allows you to share really uh, many important data or information about operators, and even, as we saw, with also uh, external stakeholders. So, this is really a, a, a big uh, novelty also. So thank you for your attention. And I, want also, I want also to thank all my team at Vivacqua, so all my colleagues, Stefan, Didier, Fabien, Frank, Tom, Chan, Sabine, Nadine, Catherine, we really took part of the project at the end during the pilot, and also other colleagues, Thierry, Pascal, Jeremy, Jordan, Christine, Patrick, Xavier, and Tony, we really worked for the pilot, but more on the technical side, uh, and I always want to thank all these people for the collaboration. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Eric, for the great presentation. Let's move to the next presentation by Simeon Kokov and uh, the uh, pilot in Sofia. Eric, you will need to stop sharing, please. Thank you. Great. Simeon, I think that you are muted. Hello? Hello? Hi, Simeon. Yes, we can, can see you. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Okay, I hope you can see <laughs> as well. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Simeon Kokuf. I'm from uh, Sofiska Buda, uh, JSC. This is um, uh, my presentation regarding our uh, uh, book number six, Monitoring a Fisker Dam and a Drinking Water Network uh, in Sofia. Uh, okay, this is the 
the map of all the cities involved. I'm not going to emphasize a lot on that because most partners uh, did this. Uh, but uh, just in brief, we had uh, several partners from various countries and cities uh, from Brussels in Belgium, Trieste in Italy, Paris in France, Thessaloniki in Greece, Sofia in Botevgrad in Bulgaria, as well as Lemesos in uh, Cyprus. Uh, in particular, our pilot um, in Bulgaria took place in uh, this uh, mid June. It was a simulation of uh, algal blooming in the main water source, uh, which is Iskar Dam as well as uh, simulating hazardous event at the inlet of uh, drinking water treatment plant in Bistrica. Uh, for uh, this purpose, we basically tested the Aquatrius uh, system and platform, uh, which is uh, basically, as you already saw, a uh, system for online monitoring and early warning of uh, water quality deviations, a uh, various uh, matter. Uh, some brief words regarding the pilot. Uh, again, we're in Sofia, Bulgaria. This is the uh, map of the Iskar Dam. And um, Sofiskovda is the largest water utility operator in the country. It was uh, in the role of an end user, basically testing the platform within the project. Uh, Sofiskovda is uh, serving the population of the city of Sofia and several adjacent uh, villages, approximately one million and a half uh, people. Uh, okay, um, our pilot overall included, as I said, a simulation of uh, algal blooming in the water source, which you see on the right in the Iskar Dam, uh, as well as um, testing um, so-called refractive index sensor, which we tested at the inlet of the drinking water treatment plant of Bistrica, and also um, incorporated social media monitoring is basically tracking uh, predefined hashtags in uh, Twitter. Uh, several words. Uh, this is the so-called floating buoy, LG Sonic, which you see in the middle in the picture. Uh, basically, what it allows us is to constantly monitor the water parameters at the water source. Uh, so it uh, gathers data every 10 minutes regarding uh, chlorophyll, uh, which is uh, basically the green uh, algae, the phycocyanin, which are the bluish green algae, and then the pH, um, dissolved oxygen, temperature, and turbidity. And based on all these uh, parameters, it uh, basically forecasts the development of algal blooming uh, in the in the dam. Uh, it also has the functionality to um, control. You know, every time it uh, the forecast uh, is like for uh, spreading of this algae, which is not uh, desired. It basically, it has an um, ultrasound system, which creates a barrier underneath the surface uh, and above which the algae cannot go. So they just go down to the bottom and they, they perish, basically. That, that's the way the, the boy controls the, the algae. Uh, the second element was uh, we use so-called if refractive index sensor or refractometer. This is also a very innovative uh, optical device uh, using uh, used to to measure the degree to which uh, uh, light is refracted when it uh, passes through a certain uh, substance, and uh, like the pure substances have a certain refractive index which changes if there are some impurities uh, in that, and that's basically detected by measuring the refractive index uh, of water and uh, change is detected in, in, in this way and uh, one can um, take action, at least uh, raise an alert for uh, taking action. This is very innovative technology, it was actually uh, patented in Holland, it, uh, it's called triplex technology, you can see the, the transfer, transaction of the sensor here shown in the picture. And the third element which we used was a so-called so social media monitoring, basically by chosen uh, certain hashtags, water quality, tap water, uh, muddy water, smelly water, and so forth. Uh, we can uh, basically gather uh, feedback from uh, the users. And uh, based on this, this can be like a confirmation for certain uh, uh, event that has happened. Uh, the goals, uh, in brief, basically, we had 
limitations in the monitoring of the water sources. In our case, as I said, the Isker Dam, we uh, usually generally gathered information about the algae about twice a year, which is, uh, you know, of course, uh, not constant. And uh, also, of course, at the uh, inlet, we have uh, measurements, but they do not uh, distinguish between these uh, chlorophyll and phycocyanin and the exact type of uh, uh, those algae. So uh, by placing the algae sonic buoy directly in the water source, we're able basically to, uh, to get this information every 10 minutes instead of twice a year. And uh, that was, of course, one of the goals and the gaps, respectively. Uh, also, the refractive index sensor helps us to, to measure the, the quality and indicating uh, potential change in the quality in the water at the inlet of the drinking water treatment plant station in Bistritza. And uh, also certain gaps were uh, registered in relation to limitation in communications with authorities and stakeholders uh, regarding uh, water safety risks and emergency preparedness. The objectives of the pilot were basically, as I said, to detect and uh, receive an early warning of algae blooming uh, via sensors of the algae sonic buoy uh, and satellite images as well, which shows the uh, by cowering shows the presence of algae and the social media all combined through the aqua trace platform and basically we tested uh, we did like an emergency drill of uh, status event algal blooming in the main water source isker reservoir as well emergency drill of hazardous event at the inlet of uh, drinking water treatment plant Bistitsa. Uh, here again, you can see you can see some screenshots from the uh, system, the algae, the Aquatrias platform, and the map of the Isker Dam. And uh, we simulated uh, these events, and uh, what we get basically from the platform is a constant monitoring of uh, sensor values, integration of data from the scale system, uh, along with others, uh, other market sensors. Uh, we get the graphs, of course, all the information is presenting uh, very nicely in uh, graphs and, of course, get visualization of uh, alerts and early warning through identification of anomalies. Uh, the solutions, basically, that Aquatrius uh, platform provides, uh, the objectives, of, of course, are to detect uh, pollution uh, as soon as possible, uh, to detect it on time. To, to detect the exact location of the event and uh, estimate the impact on the drinking water treatment plant station processes that need to be changed in order to address this uh, potential pollution. Uh, also, to react and act rapidly among the stakeholders and uh, visualization of various types of data on all on one platform, as you already saw. In the solutions, they basically provided all of this uh, throughout the system. We get like um, multiple sophisticated sensors, satellite images, and social media monitoring, uh, which gives us early warnings of uh, potential pollution events. Uh, we get also a crisis management tool, which is interesting uh, tool within the system that leads to quick communication and decision making, um, potentially among stakeholders. Uh, helps in making uh, quick data-driven decisions, discover trends, and uh, uh, prevent the upcoming uh, potential disasters. Uh, in brief, what this uh, system uh, basically gives us, uh, for us in particular, it gives us um, more timely, as I already said, and more detailed information, in particular about alg algae blooming in the water source, which we didn't have up to this point. And uh, basically now we get continuous monitoring of the water quality at the water source, and we can uh, take measures if needed. Uh, the algesonic buoy um, is programmed to, 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 to do so. Uh, also, it can uh, lead uh, potentially to cost reduction due to less chemicals used in the treatment process, uh, because once the algesonic uh, buoy activates, it uh, eliminates a certain amount of algae, and then the water that gets to the station is already does not need as much chemicals uh, to be treated. So this is also a cost uh, saving. Uh, it also gives us overall preparedness and compliance with the um, respective legislation, in particular, Directive um, EU 2020-2184, 
uh, regarding water quality and uh, more particular the risk evaluation uh, part of it and um, in essence it gives us uh, basically uh, ensures that we provide constant quality of the drinking water at the outlet for the people of the city of Sofia and the neighboring uh, villages thank you very much thank you very much Simeon so let's now proceed to the last pilot and the presentation by Elena Romanova from uh, the monitoring of the water quality parameters in Bodov. Hello, everyone. Hi, Elena. So, Natasha, please confirm you can see the screen and the presentation. So, okay. Yes, you can see. Thank you. So hi everyone, uh, I will, I'm Elena Romanova and I will be presenting uh, the PUC number seven, which is monitoring of the water quality parameters in the city of Botevgrad. So uh, as already mentioned, the platform has been tested uh, already in seven uh, pilot use cases. And here uh, you can see uh, our use case, which is uh, the one in Botevgrad. So, uh, what are we monitoring? This is uh, surface water from the dam. What are we looking for? Uh, this is uh, substance contamination, including also turbidity. And how we are doing it? We are doing it via online water quality monitoring of the below parameters, uh, which were all tested uh, with uh, three different scenarios. So here you can uh, see a quick visualization of the region and a little bit of information about uh, the company and uh, the area we are serving so svk is the second largest uh, serving the se second largest territory in bulgaria uh, and a little bit more in the next slide so the partners who were involved uh, in the testing of the pilot use case uh, number seven are SVK uh, in collaboration with the Bulgarian Defense Institute. Um, um, so uh, SVK is a utility provider of water and sewerage services for the whole Sofia district area. And the population uh, is over 250,000 people, which are spread over 22. Uh, municipalities. And uh, a few words about the Bulgarian Institute of Defense. Uh, they are an experienced organization in project deployment and execution, and they have uh, significant expertise and worldwide recognition in the fields of training and science. Uh, on this slide, uh, we have included uh, some screenshots from the platform. Uh, and our use case, uh, which was tested in collaboration with BGI. And this is the visualization of uh, the drone flights within the Aquatrius platform. And they are used as a tool for inspection and identifying sources of pollution. So you can see in the, in the screenshot a little bit uh, more. There are also videos and uh, photos from the testing. So improving the water quality and accelerating the information dissemination within SVK uh, was the initial aim and uh, implementing turbidity and residual chlorine sensors uh, gave us access to real time data. And uh, this has contributed to better communication flow and lower response times. Uh, these parameters are valued by, by our customers and uh, led to uh, on time payments. So the the drone flights to our water sources in case of pollutions and incidents uh, were also part of the pilot, as already mentioned. So uh, SVK was involved uh, also in the testing of the first and the second prototype of the Aquatrius. And uh, we participated also in the tabletop exercise in 2020. So uh, with the per participation uh, in the project, our goals and objectives uh, were to utilize the aforementioned sensors for turbidity and residual chlorine within the network, as uh, these were parameters which were previously monitored by WAP tests, and uh, they took approximately more than an hour to process. Uh, by deploying the system and making the information accessible in real time, 
we have managed to significantly decrease uh, the response time. Uh, it was important for us and for the management uh, to have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it was important uh, for making uh, informed decisions uh, to have access to this uh, and have also the alarms for, for specific events. And here you can see how all of the user requirements have been implemented within the digital solution. And uh, even on the right side, uh, we have included also the additional value provided with the visualization of the alerts, early warning through identification of anomalies and historical data presented in graphs. And we have also managed to integrate the data from the SCADA system along with the new market sensors that were part of the the Aquatrius project. And thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. So this concludes um, the presentation of the Aquatrius pilots. I would like to thank uh, all the pilot presenters and the people that were involved that uh, we could have on our presenter the pilot. And move on to the next um, Presentation by Peter. Uh, uh, Peter, I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Uh, so Peter is from uh, the Water Group, and he will um, be presenting the, um, the pilot uh, in uh, Callisto, which is related to water quality. Yes. Um, thank you for the invitation to present our work of Callisto here. Um, I already saw some very nice uh, presentations, and I think, uh, yeah, I can learn a lot from everything you already did. Um, so my name is Peter Jan Haast. I work for the Water Group. Uh, we are a water utility in uh, Flanders, Belgium, uh, one of the six uh, distributing water in uh, Flanders. Um, we have about 85 groundwater stations and some five surface water um, sources. Uh, so just some very large backgrounds there. We have, uh, of course, a lot of towers, reservoirs, about 33,000 kilometers of piping on the ground. And we serve about 3.2 to 3.3 million clients um, with uh, drinking water. Um, as some of you or most of you maybe have heard already somewhere, uh, Flanders is a water scarce region. So we have uh, issues with uh, water availability, especially in dry summers as past year. So we are very keen to uh, examine every possibility we have to preserve our uh, water sources. And that's also why we joined uh, the Callisto project. Um, maybe a, first a bit of background on the Callisto project. It was uh, approved as a research and innovation action in the Horizon 2020 space call under the topic big data technologies and artificial intelligence for Copernicus. Um, this is where it's maybe a bit different than Aqua 3S. It's that it's not really targeted solely on water. Uh, it's more targeted on things you can do with all the data that are available through uh, remote sensing and how to integrate this with um, in situ data and, and artificial intelligence to come to better information uh, content. Uh, we are working in this project with 16 partners, a bit scattered throughout Europe, and one partner from South Korea. Of course, we have a website. We're also active on Twitter and LinkedIn. If you want to know more, uh, you have the links here. Please head over. Okay. In general, um, the aim of uh, Callisto is, as I said, to bridge the gap between Copernicus data and information access service uh, providers shortly the DIAS, um, that provide all the data that are available from remote sensing. And on the other hand, end users like me, who don't have a lot of experience with remote sensing data, uh, let, let me know where to find it or how to extract useful information from it. Um, and moreover, you, don't, you, you, you not only have these Earth observation data, but if you want to combine them with all the other data that are available, for example, from UAV or sensor or social media, as I heard a lot already, uh, uh, you need to be able to combine that knowledge uh, to, to extract information. Uh, and in that aspect, we are looking at uh, possibilities with artificial intelligence and of course also semantics uh, to know what people are talking about. The uh, outcomes will be provided in an interactive interface 
with uh, emphasis on mobile and mixed reality apps also. And as uh, actually in the Aqua 3S project, we are also working with pilot use cases. Uh, for our discerned, you have one uh, cap which is related to uh, agricultural uh, monitoring, the drinking water, that's what I will talk about later on. There is one for journalism and one for border surveillance. So we are pilot use case two. Um, this is a bit a graph how we um, made it visible for us what, what the aim of this uh, use case was, being on the one hand, uh, these uh, satellite data that are available. Um, we as uh, operators or, or scientists of the water utility, we have access to a lot of our own data. And of course, the knowledge we have of the system and the idea of this pilot use case is to combine all these sources of information through the interface. Uh, it's on the one hand, the platform or mobile interfaces to um, be able to provide more data to the scientists or um, information to the operators for decision support in their uh, regular operations. We are not alone in this pilot use case. Uh, so we from the Water Group in this use case are examining um, our reservoir, the Blancard, Oops, that's gone too far, uh, which is situated in the western uh, part of Flanders. Um, but we also have another project partner, it's uh, SMAT, it's the water utility of Turin, uh, and they are examining uh, a lagoon basin of the Po River, uh, which they also use for their, uh, as a water source. What's the difference between the two basins? At the Blancard, we uh, have a hyperspectral camera available that uh, measures reflectance of the water uh, in situ. Uh, next to uh, some limited uh, online censoring and, of course, the grab sampling data. While uh, SMAT, uh, they do not yet have uh, access to hyperspectral camera, but they do have um, inline sensors for water quality and, of course, uh, grab samples to monitor water quality. And the idea of this pilot use case is to examine the algorithms that are developed for uh, water quality detection using remote sensing data at the Blancard using these in situ measurements together with remote sensing data. If these results can be transferred to uh, SMAT on their basin to also um, yeah, kind of standardize the remote sensing data and get a better prediction of, for example, algae blooms in their basin too. Because algae blooms is um, actually the, the first uh, water quality we are examining. And I don't need to tell you, I guess, because you all also just did this remote sensing pro uh, project, but there is an issue with, uh, yeah, not an issue, the, the remote sensing data from the satellites, of course, they, me they, they measure the reflectance of the, the satellite signal. And during the path from, from the, the, the light back up to the satellite, it can be disturbed in, in various ways and the data need to be corrected for these disturbances. Here um, on the left hand side, uh, you can see a graph that's um, made available by our partner, the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences, where you have in gray the data from their hyperspectral sensor, which is situated here in our basin. So it's not this one, uh, which gives a hyperspectral signal for the entire uh, visible and near infrared uh, spectrum. And here you see the, the multiband spectrum that comes from the Copernicus satellite. This one is uh, corrected using an algorithm that's developed for open waters in, at sea. And this one is corrected for an algorithm that's specifically developed for inland waters that are more turbid and, and need a different kind of correction. But you see that both of these remote sensing data, they deviate significantly from the data that are measured in situ. So these need to be corrected. Here in the dashed line, you see the correction of the Ecolite data for uh, sun glint and adjacency. Adjacency being the, the vegetation that's present uh, around the basin that also, of course, influences the reflectance uh, signal that's picked up by the satellite. And that you see here at the bottom. So the data you finally can start working on to examine uh, algae content, for example, or other water variables. On the right hand side, this is an uncorrected satellite signal. Uh, and notice this is the same uh, scale for both. 
and this is a corrected one. So you, you really need this correction to start with uh, better data. Of course, you don't only need to correct uh, the, the satellite data. Afterwards, you also need to interpret uh, the signals. Uh, and therefore, again, you have uh, several algorithms available. So Arbin's uh, examined two of them. Um, here on the left-hand side, you can see the CRAT and the SIMIS algorithms. Uh, and they also did it twice, one with fixed and one with uh, variable uh, parameters um, using a linear scale. And you see that there is some deviation between both algorithms. But overall, here you can see the chlorophyll A content that's measured in our basin using the black dots and the, um, the simulation or the, the using the measured hyperspectral data in red, respectively blue, for the two algorithms. And you see that the trend is well estimated, but especially at the higher uh, measured um, data from grab samples, the algorithms tend to overestimate uh, chlorophyll content still. Of course, we do not know if it's a real overestimation because hyperspectral data, they are measured continuously while grab sample data are taken at one specific point in the water and also in time. So maybe, uh, yeah, of course, we will do some further research there. And if you want to know more, this uh, work has just been published in the remote sensing journal. So please have a look there. Uh, moreover, uh, with the Callisto project, our partners want to uh, disseminate the knowledge gained as much as possible. And uh, a GitHub uh, project was uh, started where all the, or where a lot of the data are made available to the public. Um, and our partners from SMOT also included uh, the water quality data from a large monitoring campaign they just did in this uh, GitHub page. So if you're looking for nicely labeled data for further processing, uh, you can have a look here. In our POC, we're also looking at uh, social media, as was mentioned before. So this is um, the interface we have available um, where we can examine tweets um, using keywords that are predefined and now also with on the fly search. Um, and this, this is very nice, uh, but it also still shows that the work uh, or more research is necessary because um, some months ago, yeah, sorry, it's in Dutch. This is a news item uh, that says that uh, there was waste, uh, there was a dump of uh, a drug lab waste in the river where we take our water from at the Blancard Reservoir. The same was, of course, also tweeted. But this tweet was not discovered by the social media um, application we had. So we had a look why is it not discovered? Uh, and that's because the keywords. Uh, we had uh, supplied to the to CERT, it certainly made this also, uh, were always related to water, water quality, etc. While if you look at the tweet, there are no words referring to water quality. So actually, when you look at social media, uh, it's very rich in information, but um, it's also complicated to get the, the information out of it, out of the, the, the many tweets that are available due to the difficult difficulty of guessing the context. But I'm sure this will this will be worked out further and will be nice in the end. Of course, standardization is important. Uh, another project partner, Fraunhofer, they have set up uh, an ontology. So we did not work with the FIWARE model, but um, they started from the Candela ontology that's available for uh, remote sensing data. And they added uh, SOSA and SSN uh, adapted it a, a little bit to our use case, and then they uh, came up with this, which is, of course, nice if you talk with several partners that everyone knows uh, what they're talking about. And then last but not least is virtual mixed reality. This is developed by NeuroGames, uh, one of our project partners. They have uh, made available here, as you can see, the, the overlay of, um, of the data which is of course nice, but not, uh, not, we are really looking, or they are also really looking at this mixed reality. So if you could have this overlay, um, when you're at the basin, looking with your cell phone at the basin, it would be very nice to get the overlay of the remote sensing data, measured data, et cetera, there on the site. But that's apparently not, not very easy, of course not. 
uh, because um, your cell phone has uh, a certain uh, or it's not very certain about the positioning. It's less certain than specific devices that are already available for it. And with a cell phone, you need to make some image correction, um, which they are working on right now. And we hope to see the results of that in the coming year, because we are now starting the last year of the Calisto project. And in this last year, the next steps that we will have with our PUC are, of course, to test the platform that's being developed to see how data knowledge exchange will work, uh, how this information can be enriched for an eventual decision support tool. We will, of course, also test the products that are being developed, certainly for the hyperspectral LG measurements, uh, a correlation analysis that's still being worked on, see if these results are then transferable to the SMOT case, um, have a look at this uh, social media context, how to get the right information out of it, and then the virtual mixed reality application. And last but not least, uh, results will be disseminated to interested end users. If you have a look at our website, I think you can fill in a form saying that you are very interested uh, in the project and you want to have more information. Um, you are, of course, always welcome uh, to be up to date with uh, everything we achieve in the coming year. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention and also the people from Aqua3S for providing the opportunity to illustrate the work we already did. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, uh, thank you for the very nice presentation and uh, all the effort you have uh, put uh, in Callisto. Uh, so uh, we are moving to Lydia. Lydia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lydia Van Vakeridulirud. I have a double affiliation with uh, KWR and the University of Exeter. In this project, we are uh, involved as University of Exeter. And uh, my role now is to ask questions. And uh, I would like to invite the people, the technical people uh, that participated in this project, for instance, I would like to invite uh, Alexander Sobko, Yorgos Vosinakis. Gareth, unfortunately, is not uh, well. He has flu uh, today, so he cannot participate. Uh, Andrea from Water Europe, and also uh, Natasha, of course, and uh, the representatives of the each case study, one of them, one from each, and uh, have a short discussion at least and some questions about, um, uh, I would say, uh, summing up what came out of this project and what were the challenges and the opportunities from the technical side mostly. So uh, do we have um, uh, the uh, Yorgos Vosinakis? Alexandre is here. Oh, he's here. I'll start with the technical people. So far you have heard all the case studies. So now I'm going to the technical people, the people that implemented these solutions and had to uh, put together the platform that uh, all the um, uh, case studies commented upon. So Yorgos, first, what is your overall opinion? And I have uh, um, two questions. One, what was the main challenge or challenges you faced in the implementation of the platform? And second, how do you see its future? Hi, hi, hello there from me. Uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, so a, a very interesting process indeed. And uh, a lot of it comes uh, uh, from having a variety of end user partners with a variety of needs and a variety of systems uh, implemented and legacy systems. Um, I would say that uh, the main challenge and the main interest in all this was uh, the fusion of heterogeneous data. So, uh, as as we know, we are we are moving uh, more and more rapidly into an age when uh, intelligent systems, AI, machine learning, uh, can bring very interesting results, uh, unprecedented results, and results we could not even anticipate up to now. And uh, as most people who are engaged in such uh, calculations know, uh, a scientific model or an uh, 
a machine learning model is only as good as the data that are fed to it. Uh, so being able to provide this data in, uh, in, in a timely manner and being uh, able to provide data that is complete and useful uh, has been the main challenge. Uh, in, in a very interesting discussion I had with, uh, with Stefan actually, who presented the French uh, demo case before, uh, we were talking about um, the, the role of such a platform and of such um, a, a data repository or data connector uh, in, uh, in, in handling this information. And, and as Stefan was saying, and he's right about this, the, uh, the, the, the water network administration, so to speak, uh, already has a central point, which is the SCADA that everyone knows and everybody uses, uh, where all data is managed, collected, uh, and uh, even visualized in occasionally. Uh, so what what does a platform, what, what does another center in the context broker has to offer in this setup? What um, uh, are we shifting the gravity from the SCADA to a context broker or to any other uh, middleware basically that handles data? And uh, the answer that, uh, well, not me, but the project I think uh, has given to this is that uh, uh, first of all, it gives the chance to incorporate information that we didn't have up to now. So uh, having uh, the ability to develop uh, standardized data models, the whole idea of the digital twin, uh, so to speak, of, uh, of an actual system uh, gives us the ability to, uh, to, to, to connect data that wasn't available before, to, to find new, new, both new data producers uh, as we have seen with satellite data, with uh, uh, with data from uh, from scientific models and uh, uh, machine learning models developed by partners that um, are novel, and uh, uh, as as long as they adhere to the data model, they can receive, uh, th they can pick and choose what data they need for the system, what data they find interesting, and so even the existence of a node that is standardized and can gather all the data and even new data in standardized ways uh, gives uh, designers, uh, technical designers like me, for example, uh, the ability to review this data, to, to build models that can consume this data and give the answers in, um, in, in a manner that is already ready to consume, that is already ready to visualize, that is already ready to understand by people that are not, not as technical, not technical in, in, in this way, but technical in the way of implementing water networks. So it's a great way for us to communicate when a standardized central hub and a standardized data model uh, exists. And to, uh, I think I answered both of your questions in, in yes, once, but indeed. yeah. And Speaking about the future, I, 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 I'm really expecting to see more data models, more machine learning, uh, more interesting ways to recombine the data that now can be available and produce new results based on this data and results that will be ready to consume and ready to be visualized because they also adhere to the data model. Thank you. Alexandra, you have been here from the beginning and you, I would say... Oh. Hello, hello, hello. Um, indeed, I agree with uh, Jorko that uh, the, looking backward, uh, that the main challenge was to ensure interoperability of the platform, to agree on the technical protocol uh, due to the heterogeneous environment that uh, we have in the Aqua 3 yeah, to collect the data from different sources. It was very important to agree on the using of NGSILD to um, using the technical protocol to, to, to ensure interoperability. Also, uh, yeah, another challenge was to have agreement on the common data model. Uh, we had a lot of discussion on that, and uh, yeah, we, uh, now we have good results. Um, in regards to the risk, what we face it and obstacle that yeah, we use open source, and uh, um, uh, one of the challenge that we have, this is like a, um, some immaturity of uh, open source tools uh, that like we don't have, uh, in some moment we don't, we didn't have enough support for, um, uh, for, for to, to solve some um, bugs or incident in these uh, open source tools. And we did some workarounds to, uh, uh, to fix this. 
Mm, yeah. Um, in okay. Yeah, I think I will not <laughs> answer the next question about the future. But you know, now I'm one. coming to oh. Andrea. Andrea, mm -hmm. this question is for you. As what a Europe. You participated in this project from the beginning. You participated also in other projects that have similar content, like, uh, for instance, PathoCert. And my question to Water Europe is, what are your plans for the future uh, at this level, at your organization level and your members level and the, what you do with the commission for this type of projects that combine uh, IoT and uh, these novel uh, uh, ideas about data and platforms. What do you plan to do with it? Thank you, Leah. It's uh, it's a very good question. Thank you for the opportunity because it is, I mean, uh, the the way I mean to to go and and uh, and uh, step into the future plans. Well, I mean, uh, there are two levels that I like I mean to address. One is about, I mean, the solutions offered by the project. You know, this is important. I mean, uh, it's important to support not only the dissemination, but really the exploitation and the market uptake. And this is, I mean, extremely important because um, otherwise, I mean, we used to have, I mean, that we have invested money and resources, human resources, and found, I mean, relevant solutions uh, without them, I mean, letting them, I mean, to, to go beyond uh, the innovation, I mean, to go really to the market of day. And for this, I mean, whether well, Europe can help in different ways. One is supporting, I mean, the market of day through the traditional system, which is our world market in Europe and related activities. The other one is uh, feeding them into the into the marketplace. We got the marketplace now, I mean, from the next gen. Uh, is going to be operational, I mean, in a few weeks from now. And this, I mean, increases the opportunity for visibility of the solutions. And on the other side, I think that also our uh, activities for uh, supporting the existing and the new water rental living labs in Europe, beyond Europe, can help in order to demonstrate in real life environments the validity and importance of these solutions. And so that's this, I mean, it's a general, it's a general approach, but it fits, it fits perfectly the R3S uh, outcomes and findings. Then um, what we can do, I mean, with uh, the institutional stakeholders, which is also important. You know, there, are, there are two two areas here that we should address. One is about policy development, which is important because we need to, to make sure that policy uh, supports research, innovation, and sustainable development of water, of the water sector. And on the other hand, uh, what we need is to support the needs for um, additional uh, allocation of resources for research and innovation. And this comes from organizing a critical mass of priorities. I think that this can be done uh, with the colleagues of Aqua 3S, along with the other projects that are be working and are working in the same sector. Well, thank you very much. I wish I had more time to ask each of the uh, case studies, but you've spoke for a long time. So I suppose you had also your final thoughts. I'm uh, prompted by the organizers to close this session now. Unfortunately, it becomes short because we have little time. And I would like to introduce you, uh, uh, to introduce uh, Philippe Cousin from EGM, who's going to talk about the next subject, which is about standardization. Philippe, the floor is yours. Hello, do you see my screen? Yes, we can see yes. your screen very well. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm happy to uh, present uh, the activity we did in, uh, in Aquatrius uh, on salinization. So first I will uh, introduce uh, some slides to set the scene because uh, talking about salinization, we have to, uh, to introduce uh, the project and also the context. So just a remind that uh, standardization is uh, one of the core uh, action 
uh, that was uh, called uh, by the commission when they launched the call for project and uh, because they say this is quite uh, quite important and uh, it's uh, so we 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 had to to develop this key activity uh, because of of that uh, uh what is so we are talking about standardization for water security so uh, I will uh, remind uh, some excellent slides also did by uh, Francesca from AWA that also make uh, the survey. We come to the conclusion of the survey, which introduce uh, aspect of standardization. So just uh, also to uh, set the scene that uh, um, the, the, the water security uh, also address uh, many uh, type of activities. So it's not easy to, 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 to introduce it. Uh, basically, uh, there is also some uh, some definition, but uh, there is not uh, what also was uh, mentioned by uh, in the report uh, from uh, from uh, Awa and from Francesca that uh, there is not uh, a single let's say view about uh, water security, and there is not uh, a single thing. So it's a bit difficult when talking about standardization, uh, at least because we have different uh, aspect of uh, that address uh, water security. Uh, we have also um, different regulations, so that also makes the difficulty because uh, we, we have the drinking water directive, we have the flood directive, uh, we have the security of network and information, so just to mention that. And so we have so many directives that each directive also needs uh, to address uh, different aspects of uh, standardization. We have also uh, uh, several uh, uh, parts of uh, the the for water security of uh, entities that uh, obviously we have to consider the water supply what to consider the water bodies itself what consider the environment and also we have to consider the human health and safety so we have different uh, target target on that and also different type of actors so each actor also is considering uh, uh, the standardization for water security uh, differently so that also to set the scene on the complexity and the, the variety and the broad range of different uh, issues on that uh, so we we have to uh, first to, to 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 look into all this complexity and to try to see uh, what what we can do so what we did um, we did a, a large survey so francesca was uh, also mentioning it so the we we had uh, a, a several months ago the survey and what we can uh, uh, conclude on that it's it basically and I will come later on uh, specific action on on standardization and also on on specific standard uh, we need uh, the we, we will see later that the standards sometimes have a very large and very vague or very let's say high level uh, definition and there is a, a lot of need for for guidance uh, in particular uh, to implement the standard and also there will be also a need for uh, taking into account new technology and, and procedures so that confirm what I will introduce to you uh, later so basically what we did uh, in standardization, so we we, we look at uh, uh, two main parts of uh, of the standard. So first of all, we we look at uh, the digitalization and digital standards. So because any information that need to be treated uh, to uh, to make a decision on on water security need to be well understood, and that was a, a lot of need for for digital standards. So we we had also quite active uh, uh, through the ICT for Waters and, uh, and uh, uh, activity coordinated by uh, uh, also um, by Lydia and we have quite a lot of, uh, of activities there also to coordinate activities also within a lot of different projects. But then, as far as also on more on the on the ground uh, uh, standardization, we identify uh, basically uh, three uh, committee. The, the 164, the, the, the 230, and the 391. So the 164 on water security, the 231 more on sensor oriented, and the 391 more on crisis management. And for that, we have identified basically a specific uh, standard. You can mention in the slide uh, 17795 uh, on, on this uh, water security uh, plan. 7075 on this uh, uh, continuous monitoring for standard and 17091 or 164 on the crisis management and we uh, basically uh, we had two kind of uh, of combined action so we have a, a bottom up action and bas basically this bottom up action was uh, organized through discussion and by webinar and thanks also to the water europe that helped to organize that and you see on the on the on the 
right inside, for instance, the uh, action we had also on the water security plan. On the one hand, we have the Seine also uh, uh, producing the standard, the 15975 high level standard. Uh, but uh, we see that was a lot of need for guidance. And we uh, as a webinar also in relationship with uh, EANSIP, uh, the European Reference Network for Critical Infrastructure Protection, that produced uh, quite a guide. So that also. Later on, I will highlight uh, this, uh, the findings in standardization. On the one hand, we have the high level, two high level standards. On the other hand, the need for a very detailed guide. So uh, the action was also to make a compromise and to find a, a trade-off between uh, two details or not enough details. So we, we, we contribute to this, uh, basically to this uh, TC-164. And also uh, we have, so we even establish a liaison. And then we have identified also the standard uh, 17075 on co continuous uh, uh, monitoring reporting, so basically on sensor, where we have also identified that uh, the standards take into account uh, the existing technology, because also we, we know that uh, standardization is a bit, uh, let's say, a slow process. Uh, it should not be something very quick because need to be, uh, need to be, you yeah, have contribution from uh, from national Maroc committee and we take a time to take into account all the process. So we, uh, we have identified that, um, we, uh, we, uh, uh, the new technology, in particular, the ones that are developed by Aquatus, uh, might, uh, might also uh, uh, be considered in, in new standards. So we see all the innovation can be uh, can be uh, taken into account in new standards. So on on the standardization for interoperability, we we work quite a lot uh, with uh, the Digital Water Group and the ICT for Water. So basically, so we we keep pushing for the what's uh, called also the ontology and semantic because we might have a difficulty to. Um, to understand uh, information from different uh, sources if we don't have the same, we don't speak the same language and we don't classify the information in the same way. So the, for instance, the, having standardizing the ontology uh, it's, uh, is quite important. And for instance, Etsy uh, has a, uh, pr produce a standard called SARF for water, for instance, just to, to, to mention it. And also the way we take into account the data. So we we also take into account from very uh, big previous uh, project on fireware and this, where the stand standards have been introduced and, and validated by Etsy. So in, in particular, we call it the uh, NGSI LD standards. So we, we have uh, worked quite a lot in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this group and a lot of uh, activity, uh, thanks to the animation of ICT for Waters, uh, led to uh, and also a lot of discussion to uh, the promotion of this uh, digital oriented standard. In terms of, uh, again, on this uh, water security, a, a focusing on the committee 164 and this uh, uh, 15795 uh, 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 standard, we had also this webinar where we, uh, we, we also discussed because, again, it was uh, um, it was highlighted that uh, 17795 security of drinking waters uh, guideline for risk and crisis management is a very good standard, but it's a bit high level, so there is no details about how to implement it. And then what we confirm from the discussion and from the webinar is that uh, we had to uh, we had a lot of voice expressed by the market market uh, forces to uh, give more more details and give more guidance and more help to uh, uh, how to implement the, the, the standard. So basically, uh, from all the discussion and from all the activity in standardization, uh, working with these three committees, uh, we we have some some lessons. So basically, we see two uh, two main uh, two main issues that uh, we help to address. The issue is uh, sometimes the, the the level of detail needed. So we have to find again the trade-off between high level uh, standard to high level standards and 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 not enough details. So obviously, the way to implement some big operator or big uh, market uh, market stakeholders obviously have the capability to understand and to document and to detail the, the implementation of the standard. But we uh, we see that from some other countries, some other small players might not have the the capacity to uh, to implement and to uh, to develop all the details. So we see the, the need to, uh, to 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 help 
uh, in this uh, in this uh, high, two high level standard it is what we did also with uh, a relationship with Ransant with the guideline on inertia. And this Ransant uh, is important for these two standards, the uh, 17975 from the TC 164, and also the guideline for uh, developing strategic capability, which in the meantime also uh, evolved to another standard. But anyway, these two categories, in these two standards, we see a need for, uh, for, let's say, having some guideline or some annex in the standard. The second also main, uh, main lesson and main issue that we wanted to address is, uh, when the standard standard for instance is uh, in particular we have the 17075 uh, general requirement and performance test procedures for water monitoring equipment continuing measuring device obviously uh, the standard is uh, is considering um, the technology and the available uh, equipment on, on the shelf equipment uh, at some point in time. And obviously that innovation sometimes is very quick. So we see a very, let's say, quick uh, development process. So we, we had to, uh, to, uh, to, to see how, how, for instance, innovation can also, uh, uh, a new technology can be considered in, in the in new standards. So we had uh, established uh, quite uh, active uh, liaison with the TC230 and the particular the working group for uh, working on this standard. And we uh, we contribute to, uh, to, we are in the process of, 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 of having our, our contribution accepted by the different group. Uh, in the same uh, also type of activities, we see the, the way that uh, we see that how we can judge as two uh, devices have the same performance. And there is a, a standard called uh, ISO 164989, a guideline for establishing the current result. Also, it is based on some uh, some approach and sometimes we can debate uh, whether this uh, the, we can improve the way to consider that uh, uh, different hardware are equivalent. So again, this is two uh, kind of, uh, of uh, example of the need for a standardization and why, where we standardize and why we, we have to contribute to standardization in order to uh, improve uh, and to, to, to improve standards, uh, thanks from the Aqua 3S and also from the, the market stakeholders, we succeed to, uh, to bring uh, information to the standard standardization committees. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is there any question regarding uh, the last uh, two sessions? I hear nothing. So um, let's move to Yanko. Yanko Mikhailidis, uh, the Aqua 3S technical solutions and the market perspectives and the uptake. Yeah, you should be able to see my screen, I guess. Yes, it's visible, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so thank you, Spiros. Um, so this presentation um, that I'm going to give is basically summarizing on a high level the work that was done uh, in Working Package 10, and more specifically, the work uh, conducted on market analysis and exploitation planning. Um, and the, this work was included in the respective deliverables of the project. So with this presentation, we aim to communicate um, the market perspectives and insights that were learned during the project implementation. Uh, and this includes market size, structure, trends, barriers, opportunities, uh, major players of the market and the competition, uh, the customer segmentation, business environment, um, as well as some uh, of the financial projections that we have made for the commercial part uh, of Aqua 3S. So just to set a little bit the scene here, uh, as we all know, water safety and security are essential to humankind. And uh, as they are not only ensure public health, uh, but also support economic growth and development and enhance environmental sustainability as well as political stability, among other things. Um, however, currently water security and safety uh, are faced by great uh, challenges related to rapid population growth. Uh, increased contamination, climate variability, and uh, many others. And according to the United Nations, many people uh, around the world uh, currently live in water-stressed areas and even more so um, do not have access to safety, sanitation, and facilities. Uh, and on top of that, by 2050, there has been uh, made a projection that 70% of, um, of the population will be living in urban areas, and this will be aggravating the problem of water security and safety. 
uh, in urban areas and coupled with the current uh, lack of uh, investment that there, that there is in water management, uh, uh, this, expect, uh, this is expected to put water networks in uh, immense pressure. So as a solution, water sector authorities and uh, water organizations and other stakeholders involved in the water sector are increasingly looking for smart uh, water management solutions, aiming at the, at the exploitation of water uh, at the regional, regional or uh, uh, city level on the basis of uh, security, self-sufficiency, um, sustainability, um, and safety. So uh, this exploitation is carried out uh, through the use of innovative technologies that enable uh, water authorities to monitor, control, regulate the usage and the quality of water in cities and uh, in regions. Um, and this is basically where uh, uh, Aqua 3S uh, um, solutions can contribute greatly as, um, as they orchestrate a series of state-of-the-art technological achievements, as we heard in all of the presentations that we there uh, that were before so uh, so let's have a closer look to the um, to the market uh, of the smart water management uh, where basically the aqua 3s solutions belong uh, so according to the recent uh, uh, market research studies uh, the global smart water market um, is expected to register um, a compound annual growth rate of 10.3% uh, as the industry's re revenue is expected to increase from uh, 13 million billion euros sorry in 2021 to uh, to more than 30 billion uh, euros by 2030 so as obvious from this uh, figure uh, the largest market share belongs to the north uh, american market followed up by uh, uh, european and the asian pacific market that uh, are expected uh, to have uh, to to have um, a rapid uh, growth over the next uh, uh, over the coming years. So um, so next we are looking at the major market players uh, that currently share these revenues. As you can observe, there are big uh, big companies competing in this market uh, that are active almost in all the segments of the market. Uh, several of these companies, for example, uh, use advanced data man management or visualization, correlation and collaboration technologies to transform uh, um, uh, vast amounts of data received from various devices, uh, asset systems and stakeholders into actionable information that can guide um, uh, executive and operational decisions. Um, so, Next, we, we see the structure of the smart, uh, smart water market. Uh, as we can observe, it is divided in three major um, segments and several sub-segments. So the focus for Aqua 3S is primarily on the security segment, perhaps combined uh, with management network and data analytics, and then uh, uh, consulting and deployment. Uh, geographically, the focus uh, of Aqua 3S uh, has been on the European uh, market, as indicators uh, point towards uh, Europe being one of the early adopters of uh, smart water uh, management uh, systems. Uh, the European uh, market accounted for 2.65 uh, billion in 2021, and is expected to register a compound annual growth of 13.3%, reaching uh, more than 9 billion uh, by 2030. And this is mainly attributed uh, to the fact that Europe has around uh, 3.5 million kilometers of water distribution uh, uh, network, which presently poses a great challenge actually for the for uh, to manage it, to manage the distribution networks. And at the same time, uh, there is the need uh, for a huge investment package uh, of about 20 billion uh, per year across Europe to renovate the uh, aging infrastructure. And this includes both the investment to maintain the existing system and uh, also the investment to meet the EU uh, standards and install modern uh, water management systems. So the expected growth is uh, mainly driven by growing demand for quality uh, water services, the need to replace, uh, as I said before, uh, the aged water facilities and install modern uh, systems, uh, the rising dig digitalization of utility sector and major technological progress in uh, IoT technologies. 
So moreover, there is the rising awareness of general public about health and environment that has pushed forward many uh, government initiatives and key national priorities uh, for sustainable development towards the direction of uh, the smart uh, water management uh, systems to operate uh, um, and manage water infrastructure in a more efficient and uh, environmentally friendly way, as well as to implement stricter uh, regulation. Uh, on the other hand, there is the there are some barriers to entry for new solutions, and uh, this include the fragmented uh, the fact that there is a fragmented market with many software providers with similar solutions. The fact that the design and the construction of the smart water system are still not quite standardized uh, for massive applications due to the lack of consensus on the framework. Uh, the lack of uh, funding for smart, uh, smart water management business cases that cannot find basically uh, the money to progress with their business uh, plans and the lack of uh, strong uh, uh, political and regulatory uh, support. Uh, next, we have looked at what is the business environment uh, um, in which Aqua uh, 3S is expected to operate within this market. Uh, so we use the pestle analysis as a strategic framework uh, uh, that is commonly employed to evaluate the business uh, environment. And overall, uh, from the pestle analysis, we can uh, uh, we could we can conclude, and the main outcome basically is that the the political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal uh, macro factors uh, are more favorable than not, uh, and not only for the growth of the sector, but uh, for its upgrade through the adoption of the new technologies that can also help in transforming it. So, so by now, uh, we have seen the several market aspects, but uh, we haven't talked about the customer segmentations. Uh, so who are the basically the clients and the customers? Uh, first segment um, um, is the public sector agencies involved in the water resources. These are uh, water utility operators, water uh, authorities and um, management units, water protection agencies and their emergency responses and so on. Uh, currently, they are facing two major problems uh, related to integration to legacy systems and the poor communication channels. And Aqua 3S solves their pain points, let's say, by offering uh, um, optimization of communication channels uh, with public and integration to the legacy systems. Uh, so the second segment is the private sector organizations and companies with uh, water interests. Uh, they also face uh, two major uh, problems that uh, Aqua 3S can solve for them. First, uh, by automating an early um, warning notification of relevant parties, uh, Aqua 3S solves the problem of slow response by water authorities and by offering a, a simple and easy to use uh, platform and interface. That solves the basically the pain point with the complex interfaces that uh, those organizations have to deal uh, currently. And the final um, uh, segment is the in all the enterprises with similar hardware and software solutions uh, that uh, also Aqua 3S can, uh, uh, with its modular nature of uh, of the platform, uh, can offer continuous update of software and all in uh, one solution, uh, solving their uh, pain points. So, uh, so now that we have uh, also seen the customers um, and uh, what value Aqua 3S can basically deliver to them, let's have a look also on the competition. Overall, there are plenty of solutions that can address multiple segments uh, of the market, including the security segment. But there, there is still a gap on how these solutions can be integrated with the existing um, legacy system in, uh, in the water safety networks. Uh, so in the figure, um, we see competitive solutions that are depicted against tools and components that are used uh, by the Aqua 3S solution. Uh, so visual analytics and 3D visualization on the vertical axis and the critical crisis management uh, scenarios together with the cl crisis classification and decision support uh, on horizontal axis. Uh, so in contrast to the competitors, uh, Aqua 3S services vertically addresses issues of the security segment, providing among others the development of the crisis management uh, scenarios that are not uh, commonly uh, met in other providers, giving it, uh, let's say, a competitive edge. Overall, combining the expertise uh, from the water and the ICT domain uh, with the knowledge of companies that are already uh, well established in the market, we can say that Aquatrius can penetrate the market and have a good market positioning. 
The same uh, is true when we perform a, a SWOT analysis and it's validated that uh, uh, the SWOT analysis that is conducted to evaluate basically the company's uh, competitive positions and to develop the strategic planning. Uh, so in short, what we see from the SWOT analysis, uh, it reveals that aqua 3 has a great uh, competitive position uh, as its uh, internal strengths outperform its weaknesses and the external opportunities uh, overshadow any potential uh, threats. Finally, we have made uh, a projection for the potential market uh, penetration over a five-year uh, period, with the focus being on Europe, as the commercialization and in other uh, continents seems uh, not to be so realistic by, uh, for the time being. Uh, so the commercial rollout is initially uh, planned to take place in consortium countries, uh, which represent 57% uh, of the market size. Uh, so, and the strategy here is to concentrate the commercial efforts in countries where uh, the consortium partners have um, uh, offices or have established um, commercial networks, so to minimize the cost of commercialization of the platform. So, according to our estimation, the Aqua 3S can achieve a market penetration of about 1.7% uh, of total addressable market or 3% uh, of the serviceable available uh, market over a five year. Uh, projection. Uh, this uh, percentage reflects only the primary customer segments, namely the public government agencies and the private organizations, without including other uh, customer segments. Uh, so finally, by conducting a financial projection uh, uh, for Aqua 3S, we translate the potential market penetration into potential future revenue. Our financial projection takes into account several assumptions stemming from the current uh, uh, market data and our general uh, knowledge of macroeconomic environment. So, uh, moreover, uh, we have uh, considered the joint exploitation of the Aqua 3S platform and the provision of the software as a suite of services for pilots and uh, projects. Uh, so, the execution of small pilots where the potential of the platform and its technical components will be tested directly by clients. The average cost was estimated to be uh, around uh, 20,000 euros based on the pricing received from partners on individual components. The success of a pilot uh, uh, is expected to trigger the execution of a project uh, where the client will fully deploy the potential of the Aqua 3S and uh, its uh, complementary services. Uh, the success rate uh, that we have considered is from 10 to 20 percent, reflecting the assumption that over time more and more pilots will be converted, uh, hopefully, to, into projects. The average uh, cost of the project has been estimated at uh, 140,000. And according to our estimations, combined revenues can potentially reach uh, more than uh, 8.5 million euros over the projected uh, period. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yango. Thank you very much. It was very, very much interesting and excellent perspective for the RTS and the sector as well. So really, it's... Um, um very good news and uh, excellent analysis thank you so much thank you um so let's proceed with the final poll questions andrea yes thank you so much so we have a uh, a new poll a short poll is a couple of questions uh connect as before i mean through the qr code or through uh, the website
I think that you can stop. I mean, the the, the first poll. Uh, well, I mean, what is great is that the webinar was interesting. We touched, I mean, uh, uh, important uh, topics about innovation, and has been useful. I mean, because of course, I mean, this is uh, it's been an excellent opportunity for disseminating uh the outcomes of the project and establish i mean uh, new links for, for the next steps um it's a brilliant informative success for, for the data management there are a lot of input and uh, i think that's, all these inputs are, are really uh, relevant and important because we can really feel from uh, from the audience i mean the um, the perception of this, um, not only of, of the webinar, but about, I mean, the product itself and uh, the pilots. There have been a really uh, amazing experience. Uh, shall we go to the next question? So now in your opinion, I mean, what is or are the most challenging factors of security, resilience and sustainability? Because we touched, I mean, these three important topics in, for a water smart society, what, what with them, what we are looking for. Uh, can you rank I me mean, about this, between these nine uh, keywords or key challenging factors? Andrea, maybe Lisa cannot see because it sees in the attendees and not the panelists. Your response, just keep this in mind. Yes, One more minute. Well, I mean, we had uh, the first is the pollution, and then we have the climate change it's coming up, then critical infrastructures, then urbanization, financial constraints, policy barriers, socioeconomic dynamics, diseases, pandemics, and the last time is population dynamics, including migration. Now, uh, is anybody from, from the panelists who want to comment on this? Can I say something, Andrea? Please, Lydia. What we see from the multiple answers, and I gave multiple answers myself, is that it's not simple. It's a very complicated matter, water security, and um, it cannot, it has many challenges. It cannot be addressed with one type of technology or one type of approach or one instrument of approach. And I think the, com the, the complications we had in Aquas VS, but also what we did just shows this.
Yes, I mean, it, because I mean, the, 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 the scenario is extremely complex. Um, but this is, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a poll that uh, is asking me, you know, it's kind of a, a quick answer. And uh, just, I mean, what, to understand what is the feeling from, 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 from the audience about uh, the priorities. But I mean, what it is that, I think that we all have, I mean, a, a common understanding and, uh, and uh, perception about the role is played by by the increasing pollution of uh, all the resources and the impact of the climate change as well. Uh, and then, I mean, the problem of the critical infrastructure dependency and the aging of the infrastructure, of course, I mean, creates a lot of pressures, I mean, on uh, on uh, service delivery on, uh, on the overall society. Any other comments? If there are other comments, uh, well, I mean, um, I give the floor once again to Natasha for the last, uh, for, for the final remarks and, uh, and the takeaways and uh, to, to go ahead with the short presentation of the birth. Thank you. So, uh, thank you all very much for your great work, the effort, the, for the um, organization of uh, the event by Water Europe and uh, all the participants and the presenters uh, for the great presentations. Uh, I have some just uh, lines to um, uh, that I would like to mention here before we close and that before actually we have a short uh, um, presentation for Waterverse that I Aqua 3S um, managed to do what, uh, uh, at least, uh, let's say, made some big steps towards the major need of uh, uh, water, water operators, which is to put in a single platform information from multiple sources, which seems to be crucial. Uh, as they need to, ha to have a better understanding and monitoring and by comparing all this data together, which now this is not actually the case. Uh, on the same um, uh, Aqua 3 platform could be used also as a data gateway, as this was, let's say, um, discovered through the pilot of uh, 3S, uh, where specific components of the platform were used. So we saw that Aqua 3S can work both as a whole system platform and as something more, let's say, specific individual parts can be used. Uh, and before I close, I would like to mention that apart from all the things that were promised and that were actually realized, um, there is also a work that is done uh, beyond the scope, which is a policy brief that was created with a synergy done with uh, Digital Water 2020, which is also published in the official portal of EU. This is an accomplishment and something we went beyond, let's say, uh, the work that you have promised to show that the uh, uh, the partners are dedicated to Aqua 3S and uh, they have offered um, a lot of information to also to the other projects. Uh, I don't have any other remarks. I would like to thank you all and uh, ask Elias to step in and make his uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, thank you all the participants and the presenters here today for uh, presenting Aqua 3S. Uh, it was uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, a success story in my opinion and uh, um, based on what we had in mind uh, at the conceptualization of all this project at its uh, proposal reparation, I, I didn't expect to have uh, so, so many uh, concrete results and uh, useful uh, outcomes. Uh, the uh, what we see in Aqua 3S is actually the generation of a, a mass uh, stream of uh, metadata in the water sector. Uh, I, I, this is uh, okay. Let me just okay. share my screen. Um, uh, no, no. Okay, so there we are. Uh, so uh, based on the uh, metaverse that we are all living, but focusing on the water sector, uh, 
uh, this gave some inspiration to, to 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 also focus on the data uh, management systems um, that need to be further advanced. Uh, 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 large streams of data are produced uh, 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 and uh, from a, a wide set of sensors that we have seen in Aqua 3S, uh, going beyond sensor data, we have seen social uh, media, drones, satellite images, uh, highly, highly heterogeneous data. So um, this would all require some advanced data uh, management systems towards the creation of data spaces that they are uh, very uh, welcome uh, nowadays uh, to, to support um, collaboration among uh, various industries um, at a cross-sectorial level. Uh, this project links uh, the Big Data Value Association with uh, Fireware, with Water Europe and ICT for Water. And uh, this project is on uh, uh, water data management ecosystem for water data spaces. Uh, the, the project is uh, coordinated by uh, by CERT and uh, technically managed by engineering and has started recently in October. Uh, the plan is to, to develop this water data management ecosystem for making data uh, accessible, affordable, secure, fair and easy to use. Uh, this is a consortium of 17 partners and you may see that there is a lot of uh, overlap also with the key partners of Aqua 3S consortium uh, distributed among 10 countries um, representing uh, the water domain also. Uh, we have um, demonstrations in six uh, countries with the water utility operators uh, spread around Europe. The objectives are to um, to engage and using stakeholders uh, uh, in the water sector for um, a contribution in uh, the definition of a European data space um, in the in the water sector to uh, identify, extend, and integrate data management tools uh, based on what is already available from Fireware and international data. Uh, uh, Data Space Association uh, demonstrate this uh, ecosystem in a real environment, uh, 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 trying to be uh, uh, to, to to follow the the success um, uh, the successful methodology of Aqua 3S project and extending on top of that, uh, indicate uh, tools in the uh, what related. Um, technologies that could lead to, to the definition of, um, uh, of water data spaces and ensure that all this data uh, data uh, that has been produced uh, that are able to be produced by a specific set of AI solutions are, are sustainable and they can be re uh, replicated in other uh, in, in other um, infrastructures in other countries they can uh, be scalable and of course they can create value a uh, commercial value through uh, business applicability uh, this is all for today uh, and thank you very much uh, I would really like to raise your attention about this project and um, hopefully we will be able to uh, to, to meet again uh, and discuss water uh, issues uh, from water security, safety, and standardization to uh, towards the creation of a water data management ecosystem. That's all from my side, Natasha. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Elias. Uh, Spiros, I don't know whether you would like to uh, also note something before we close. No, uh, I think that everything has been said, uh, all these uh, almost four hours. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the participation. Thank you, Andrea, uh, for all this organization. Uh, thank you, all the speakers and the attendees. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have thank a nice you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye